Pittsburgh Jaguars. I'm Mickey Dell with George Grijalva, and we bring you a second helping of Valley Center this season, George. Yes, yeah. yeah. and I we, hope we have a game like we did that first one. Well, we've been saying Great. last week that we were ranked number eight, and they were number nine, so if things stayed the same, we would have them. Well, after last week's game, we got moved up to seventh. Actually, they were number ten. We had, okay. uh, yeah, we were going to play uh, El, Capitan. El Capitan, right. They were number nine. We were number eight. Valley Center was number ten. Well, they leaped Imperial over Patrick Henry and put Imperial at number seven and then going against number ten, Valley Center. That's where we're at tonight. The Tigers won an earlier matchup, 25-22 in overtime, as Joel Robles kicked a 38-yard field goal, his third of the game, to run the Tigers' win streak over the Jaguars to two games. We beat them up there last year 10-9, to and this year 25-22. Imperial enters the game seeded number seven, Valley Center number 10, and the winner will face second-seeded Fallbrook in northern San Diego County next Friday. The Tigers come into the game off an impressive 50-20 to victory over Southwest last week. That victory helped them leap over Patrick Henry and to secure that number seven seed. It wasn't easy, though. We, we didn't anticipate Southwest playing that well early in the game. Great first half. With them. Oh, it was close. They gave us a scare that first half. It was nip and tuck. The Tigers would score in their first possession of the game as junior quarterback Jaden Ayala would blast in from three yards out to make it 7 another. But the Eagles came right back, a 15-play, 80-yard drive, and they had the two-point conversion that was good, and they're up 8-7. to seven. And we're looking at each other with question marks <laughs> in our eyes. <laughs> Ayala uh, would score a second rushing touchdown moments later using a short field after a poor eagle snap uh, on a punt to make it 15-8. to But then Southwest retaliated with 221 left in the second quarter with a touchdown pass to make it 15-14 Imperial. The Tigers would extend the lead to 22-14 at the half on Julian Jimenez's three-yard rushing touchdown, 22-14 at the half, and we're kicking off. Yeah. So we're kind of worried. We were worried. But the Tigers put the game away in the opening minutes, literally, of the third quarter, scoring three times in four minutes and 18 seconds on a Brandon Felix touchdown off a fumble, recovered it, he got into the end zone with it, a 46-yard punt return by Alfredo Dorame, and an Andres Castro three-yard rush, and it went from 22-14 to to 43-14. Heck with Yes, on that. Yeah. The Tigers kicked off in the second half uh, and still got the three touchdowns that quick. And then Ethan Reeves broke many tackles. Four, I think it was four. At least four. Yeah. In route to a 42-yard rushing touchdown at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and that would seal the 50-20 to victory in the seventh win of the season for Imperial against just three losses. And we'll look at what to expect with the Jaguars, who are a completely different team than we saw earlier this year, as our pregame show continues in just a moment. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial is 100% authentic Mexican cuisine. Their extensive menu features traditional handmade Mexican dishes with nothing but fresh ingredients. El Zarape Restaurant has taken it over the top with their creative ideas like stuffed special quesadillas with carne asada, shrimp, or pollo asada. There are 17 different burritos. El Zarape Restaurant, 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Or call in your order at 760-355-4435. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Roto-Rooter, your plumbing and drain cleaning specialist. Roto-Rooter offers full services from hydro jetting to camera inspection, water heaters, faucets, garbage disposal, anything that's clogged up. They'll take care of the problem right. Roto-Rooter is a locally owned family business with 60 years in the Imperial Valley. Call the experts at 760-352-6789 or 344-2533 on the north end. Roto-Rooter, when drains don't work, we do. Mickey Dale and George Grohov and Imperial with CIF playoff action, the Tigers and Valley Center. And this is a different Jaguar team from what we saw in week number six. They were coming off their first win of the year. If you remember, George, they beat Rancho uh, Buena Vista 21-7 to the week before they came down here. That was their first win of the season after opening 0-4 with losses to El Capitan, Brawley, Poway, and San Pasqual. They were 1-5 and after that Tiger overtime win of 25-22. But since then... The Jaguars have won four straight with victories over Vista, Escondido, and Westview before last week's 14-7 win over Oceanside, and that would give them a share of the Valley League Championship. They enter tonight ranked number 10 in Division Three with a record of 5-5, five and five, and they certainly want a victory to not have a losing record for the second season in a row. No. Because it's not like them. No, <laughs> you know, not. not at all. 
Sophomore Braylon Mitchell is expected to get the start at quarterback. He's been efficient as of late. He's completed 59% of his passes for 954 yards with 10 touchdowns and just three interceptions. Jeff Prentice Daly is the go-to man in the rushing game. He has 499 yards, averaging four yards a carry and has scored six touchdowns. And then on special teams, and we were talking about that before we started on the air tonight, that he is the national leader in kickoff returns. Wow. averaging 48.8 yards a return with four kickoff returns for touchdowns. Wow. And we helped him. And we helped him. We gave him one of them. Too. He got an 80-yarder early in the meeting in week number six. So, And he's not very big. When you look at him, he's not imposing. He's shown as 5'9", 170, a junior, but he runs hard. He runs hard. He, he runs, hard. runs hard, and he's elusive. And yeah, so, I remember we mentioned that he runs like those guys in Brawley. Yeah, that's right. Brawley trying to scratch at every yard they can get. And, that's, and we've seen that over the years with the, the players at Valley Center, their running backs, have always pushed it hard for every single yard. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does tonight. And I was coaching, uh, talking to uh, head coach David Shaw before the game, and, and he's worried if we don't get the touchback, which, of course, that's what we're going to try to get, is to have Joe Robles kick a touchback every time. He's got 27 of them this year. But if he doesn't, he's worried about that that uh, reverse yes. that they had the last time. So, anyway, I think they know to watch for number two. Yeah, so it so, might. Yeah. So it might. So it should be a pretty good matchup tonight, and we'll be back to look at other Valley teams in the playoffs in just a moment. Start that day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, full, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending players to special training. Through their fundraising efforts, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They are always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! Beautiful night for football, George. 72 degrees. It's going to get down into the low 60s by the end of the game, but we've got the windows open in the press box. Yeah, and we're in shorts. And we're wearing shorts. <laughs> and we're doing all right. So they may not stay open too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have to close the, the, the windows here in a little bit. Other games tonight, and there's a lot of them here in the Valley. There are four games in the Valley. The Central Spartans earned the number six seed in Division Two. They will host number 11 seeded. East Lake at Cal Jones Field in El Centro. And also Division Two, the Brawley Wildcats, number 10 seed, and they will journey to San Diego to take on the Bishop School Knights. We saw them up in La Jolla last year. And uh, what is, was it one or two overtimes that we went for it? Uh, I remember. I want to say it was the second overtime and tried for a two point conversion, and we both thought that he was going to make it in. Christopher yeah. Tiernan, and we just knew yeah. he got he was on the option. He turned up field. I was like, he's going to make it. And yeah. then their linebacker okay. came from nowhere to, and kept him out. And uh, they went on to go to the championship game. So, anyway, they're playing. Bishops has moved up to Division Two, and they have Brawley tonight hosting them in La Jolla. In Division Four, eight-seeded Calexico will be hosting number nine seeded Escondido Cougars in that game. That's down at Ward Field in Calexico. And then in Division 5, it's a memorial. The Scots carry the number one seed in Division 5, and they will be hosting Valhalla tonight. The Scots 7-3 and three on the year. The horse, Norsemen into the regular season at 3-7. and seven. And also in Division 5, the Southwest Eagles. We saw them last week here in Imperial. They're seeded number seven, and they will take to the road. They'll play Sweetwater Red Devils the number two seed. We saw them a few years ago playing here and then up at Sweetwater. We saw them up there. And in the newly created Division 5 AA, the Hopeville Vikings are also number one seed, and uh, they will have a bye this week. Number six seeded, Calipatria, will travel to meet number three seed, Tri-City Christian. I hadn't heard that team name in quite some wow. time, but right. Carroll played against them about... Oh, 20 years or so. Yeah, that was one of those that uh, Jonathan and I were doing the games. He was in high school at the time, 
and I told you on some of our trips of some of the weird ways we had to cover games, we did that one on top of their snack bar. Oh, okay. At Tri-City Christians. Okay. That was, that's the only thing that stands out. We won the game fairly handily, and we were on top of the pre- the uh, snack bar. I think Robert Thomas was playing at that time, so it was a little over 20 years oh, ago wow. that Imperial played Tri-City Christian, and they will be uh, hosting Calipatria tonight. All those games are set to start at 7 o'clock as well, and we'll try to keep you updated on those games uh, throughout this night. So uh, sit back and enjoy football tonight. You were saying that Bill Teets has already yeah, checked in from Missouri, pretty. and so he'll be listening in from there. Rick Sharp checking in from the Gulf Coast of Mississippi has already checked in. The Elder, I believe, is up in Worcester, Ohio, because there's a book uh a gathering of selling books and and meeting other writers and oh, stuff wonderful. that he and his wife Amy have gone up to in Worcester, Ohio. Okay. And if you're a World of Outlaws Sprint Car fan and remember Jack Hoddenshield, that's where he lives is Worcester, Ohio. So anyway, Hoddenshield or Hoddenshield? I never knew that one. It, you know, it's funny because <laughs> I wasn't sure either because he's been known as the Wild Child. The Wild Child. Yeah. The last of his name is has child, child with an S in front of it. And it was funny because I interviewed him in Terre Haute uh, a few years ago. And I said, I've heard your name both ways. How do you pronounce it? And it was kind of funny because he paused for a moment and he said, it's actually Howden Shield. Like, oh, all right. I'll call you that from now on. <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> so, yeah, the wild child is Howden Shield, and he's from Booster, Ohio. The uh, Valley Center Jaguars are in the north end zone, all white uniforms, black helmets with the Jaguars similar to Jacksonville of the NFL on the side. And the Tigers in all red have come out onto the field now, and that's to cheer you here from this partisan Tiger crowd here in Imperial. A big white eye in the middle of the field at the 50-yard line, red trim around it, and uh, everybody's about psyched up for football. Now, I think there's a lot of tailgating going on because it's not quite as full on our side as we normally see it. So I think they'll be tripping in a little bit later than they normally do. Yeah, I hope so because so. when I came in, it was – Nobody here. Yeah, I, I walked over it. from home and I'm looking down and go, wow, there's a lot of a lot of parking on the street parking, yeah. where normally there isn't any. And so uh, but they they started to fill in now and it'll get more so as we go on. This is the Division Three San Diego section CIF playoff game. This is the first one. The winner tonight will go against the number two seed Fallbrook Warriors next Friday night. And, and we'll then, be back with the opening kickoff and our coin toss in just a moment. Mmm, Johnny's Burritos. An Imperial Valley tradition since 1963. Three locations, Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Delicious burritos, including your favorite breakfast burritos, made just the way you like it. Tacos and taquitos, sandwiches, burgers, carne asada fries, and so much more. And don't forget, their delicious Johnny's Sweet Tea. Johnny's Burritos in Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Hi, this is Jason Jackson, owner of Southwest Security. Two years ago, I opened Southwest Postal, offering you 24-hour access 365 days a year. So if you're tired of dealing with the inconvenience of our post office hours and you would like to be able to get your mail when you want, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, in the middle of the night, then come visit us at Southwest Postal with 24-hour staff. Plus, we're also your local FedEx, DHL, and Postal Service Center. We even offer text message and email notification when you receive your mail. Southwest Postal at the corner of 4th and Hile in El Centro. Wake up with us at Broken Yolk Cafe. Open daily at 7 a.m. Serving you your favorite breakfast from omelets, pancakes, how about eggs, Benedict, waffles, and yes, Mexican breakfast too. Broken Yolk Cafe also serves lunch till 2 p.m. From sandwiches, salads, and yes, of course, the all-American cheeseburgers. You can order online at Broken Yolk Cafe El Centro or call 760-352-9655. That's 352-9655. Captain's getting ready to come out into the middle of the field for our coin toss, and the Imperial Valley Football Officials Association has referee John Seaman out there tonight, umpire is Sean McLaughlin, head linesman Roman Rubio, line judge is Ross Rubio, and Michael Garcia, the back judge. Captain's for the Tigers on the near side, and uh, once again, the all-red uniforms tonight, and uh, Jose Apodaca will be one of the captains, and... Jay Nayala, another captain. Ethan Reeves as the captain. And Joel Villacampos. And for Valley Center, their captains include Braden Contreras. I believe their numbers are, are get crunched up. But Kevin Garcia is another captain. 
And it looks like Carson Parrish is a captain. I can't see on the far right if you can see a number. Here we go. I think 30. it's number 30. Yep. And we don't have a 30. Of course, that's where that <laughs> works, right? No, oh, 70. 70. It's McDermott. And he wears the two different jerseys, remember. He's number 18 and oh, 70. Oh, this is the team. Okay. Yeah, Nate McDermott. And he's the other captain. But they have a different kind of a font, and it gets crunched up on the bottom. And you, we were watching, and the four yes. doesn't get enclosed on the top. So when yeah. you don't see the bottom, you think it's an 11. That's what I thought it was know, an 11. Right, but it's number four. So the font they use is a little bit different than what we would normally see. I can't really think of who has that, but can you think of somebody who has something like that? That Chicago's Most always years. been different from everybody yeah, else, but I don't remember the But, but they, that they do round off their fours and stuff. Yeah. But this is a four like when we were in elementary school. Yeah, exactly. They could have. Write that the Tigers will be kicking off to start off the game. They'll defend the south goal when we go left to right. To open up this ball game, and you're listening to the action on KXORadio.com. Mickey Dale and George Gralvis to sit back on a Friday night, and uh, this will be our last home game. Yes. I don't think we'll be I on don't the, think we'll be back. Nope, we won't be back, so this is our final home game of the season. And the Tigers will be kicking off to Valley Center from left to right, from the south to the north, and there's no wind at all. Nope. Not a trace of it. But no. the temperatures, you can feel them getting a little cooler. I can feel it now. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to my sister. She lived in Oceanside, and she taught her whole life in Fallbrook. Uh-huh. She, okay. She taught a lot of these kids here. But I told her, I've never been to Fallbrook. Have you? I've been there only twice. Never. I've been there twice. I told her, I can't think of a time that I would have done them. Jeff oh. Quintus Staley on the near side, and as we mentioned earlier, he is the nation's leader in kickoff return average with 48 point yards per return. On the far side is uh, you know, is Bear Morales is on the far side. And uh, they do that with someone, if it's a shorter kind of a kick, they'll do a reverse. But uh, I was talking to uh, David Shaw before the game, and I said, let's just have Joel just kick it through the end zone every time we don't have to worry about it. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see if he can get that going. He looked good in pregame. Yeah, he did. 27 touchbacks going into the game. This is going to be a long one. It's not going to make it there. It's going to get to the four-yard line, and Morales will have it. He'll reverse. hand off on the reverse to the far side to Staley, and Puente Staley will not make it too far past the 20-yard line, about the 23, and that's where Valley Center will have the football first and 10. The coverage by Mario Tapia for the Tigers, along with, I think it was Sonny Beltran. Yeah, it was Sonny Beltran. Starting out on defense for the Tigers, we expect to see Eddie Martinez and Bozin in the backfield. And uh, actually, we're going to change it's Jaden Wilson that's going to be at the safety position. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we're not remember him starting at safety before. So that'll be interesting to see like that. And uh, we'll see if Braylon Mitchell will be that's starting or Humbert, or it is going to be Braylon Mitchell starting. And uh, Puentes Staley will be to his right, going in motion as Kevin Garcia to the far side. High snap, fake the handoff, going to throw it short in and out of the hands of the intended receiver on a little swing route, and it's a second down and 10. Yeah, 55. Sure got in there quick for the Tigers. Danny Estevez made him rush that. So the receiver hadn't turned yet, and the ball's already on its way. He was able to get a hand on it. Eddie Martinez will be on one corner on one side, and as we mentioned, Zen will be on the other side. Yeah. And we see Jaden Lopez at one linebacker. We'll get the others for you in just a moment. Going under center this time, getting away from the shotgun, is Mitchell. Mitchell taking a long time to pitch Ooh. it out to the near side to Staley. And uh, Staley's going to be hit from behind at about the 27-yard line. So give him a gain of four. Third down and six coming up. Yeah, Campos and Jaden Wilson combined for the tackle. Staley now puts him over 500 yards rushing for the season. Came into the game one yard shy of that. So now he's at four, 503 has one 100-yard game this year and has scored six touchdowns, leading their team in both those categories. Okay. It started to look like a good play. I like the way that the tight end came around and blocked that linebacker. Trips right this time for Valley Center. And man comes in motion again as Morales, or as Garcia. And then he stops at a wing-back position, back to pass, rolling to his right as Mitchell. Looking downfield, heavy rush, looking downfield, be hit. At the behind the line of scrimmage, we pushed out of bounds on a loss of one. Yeah, Campos? No, it's 55. 55, yeah, right. Yes, it is. Nice job of coming yeah. up and making the stop on that. It's going to be a loss of one, and it's a fourth down and seven from the 26, and they'll let the puck. Yeah, Ethan got back there quick and flushed him out of the pocket, and then Esquivel got him while he was trying to tell his receiver to go 
feet. Back to receive for the Tigers, Alfredo Dorme. And a timeout. And timeout called quickly by the Tigers with 10.55 to go in this first quarter of play. It's Valley Center zero and Imperial zero. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Dermot. Back to punt, averaging 39 yards a punt. Dodome deep to receive for the Tigers. Tops in the Imperial Valley with a 26-yard punt return average. Nice snap back. And gets the punt off. Man, it was close back. It looked like it might have got touched. Dodome jumps and catches the ball at the 50-yard line. But a player is going to be down from Valley Center, and I think we're going to get that call back and, uh, against the Tigers. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah, I think it was oh, a hit yeah. behind the play. Oh, man, I've never seen a punt return. I think it might have been buzzed in back there, but I haven't seen a punt return or run up and jump in the air to make the catch. That's that kind was, of scary. That has scared me. Yeah. What are you doing? So for midfield, it's going to be a penalty against the Tigers. And so Imperial will get possession of the ball first and 10, and they'll be at their own 35-yard line to open up this first possession of the ball game, 10.46 to go in the first quarter. Oh, it'd be a couple of guys so close to that. I oh, he did. I thought he got right. it. He didn't want to run into the punter, so right. he went to this right. He veered off. Veered that, off. Was, that was a smart move by him. Good veteran move. Yeah, he's gotten close so many times this year. Yeah, quarterback quarterback's going to hand it off to Castro over left tackle. There's nothing there. He's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Second down and 10. Yeah, it didn't look like he got a clean handoff on that. It looked like he bobbled it a couple of times. Well, we cut the sights on them up front. So hopefully, we can wear them down. And along the front for the Tigers on offense, as you said, up front we've got Gillian Rosales, five ten and two hundred pound sophomore. Jordan Malik, six foot two eighty five sophomore. Maximus Alvarez, 5'11", 240 junior. Jose Apodaca, 6'2", 270 senior. And Ethan Aguirre Fierro, 6'2", 295 senior. Back to pass is uh, uh, Yala, and he tries getting it out to Brandon Phoenix. He gets a hand on it, but that's about it. And it'll be a third down and 10 from the 35. Threw it behind him. Yep. Threw it behind him, but he's down. He, he told me he's supposed to come back. We see number three in the line. Giovanni yeah, Robles, yeah. we haven't seen him really playing many downs since yeah. the opening game of the season. He's had a sprained knee, and so he'll be in the slot on the right, along with Jaden Wilson and Mario Gaxiola to the near side. His trips right for the Tigers. And Jared Nixon wide left, back to pass Ayala again, looks out to the flat, then going to pass Got him. As Robles who makes the catch, but he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard to get it out to the 44-yard line. But the Tigers are yards short. I would suspect they will punt. But, but it's nice to it. see him get up in the air yeah. make a good catch. I was worried about him coming down with that defender on his back. Looked good. Yeah, he did. Looked gave, good. Gave some confidence right there. Nice, confidence nice right. pass from Ayala. Just yeah. well defended by Valley Center. So the Tigers will have to punt. Uh-oh. Hold on. They pulled out this oh, long snapper. They changed. They've changed. They changed it. Yeah, so they've changed. The Tigers are going to go for it. First big play, really, of this ball game is the Tigers have a fourth down and one from their own 44-yard line. You think you get him to jump. That's what I'm thinking, maybe, too. A hard snap count. Nope. nope. Hand it off to Castro over left side. It. Breaks one tackle. We'll get the first down across the 45 to the 47-yard line. So a gain of three and a first down for the Tigers. Big 87. Took him down, Mac Victor, but Castro pushed him back. He had a four on it, so first and ten from the 48. Mm -hmm. Good call early in the game. Yeah, gutsy call. Yeah, gutsy call. (laughs) So first and ten, Tigers from their own 48-yard line. Southwest already scored. Southwest has scored. Eight-nothing already. Good deal. Southwest at Sweetwater tonight. Up in Chula Vista, or National City, I should say. 
And out goes up the middle again to Castro. Gets into the foreign territory of Valley Center to the 44-yard line. That's going to be a gain of about eight. Second down and two coming up. We didn't have Castro the first time we met him. So No, that's right. I hope he's a game changer. He's already broken a few tackles and, and changed his route on yeah, his like, run. So this like one that. he looked good. Yeah. That, but this was on the line. They made that big hole for him. They created for him. The Castro will stay in the lineup. They'll be in the pistol formation on the right hash mark. If you're looking from above, going to the north. And again, Castro. Castro will get the first down, pushes his way down to near the 40-yard line. Just shy of it, they're going to stay about the 41, but it will be a gain of three and a first down for the Tigers. There, Morales made the tackle for the Jaguars. So now it's the left, it's the first down. So by the Tigers, that started their own 35, now moved down to the Valley Center 41-yard line, their initial possession of the ball game. No score, 728 to go in this first quarter of play. Tigers send Gaxiola wide right. Robles in the slot right. And Jared Nixon at six foot four on the far side. Now Robles will move in. He's six foot five, just a sophomore. Ayala gets the snap, takes the hand up, goes back to pass, looks over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Jared Nixon threw a little bit in front of him, and it goes incomplete. Second down and ten. I like that though. I like that they went over the middle with him. I seen that before the game. They were practicing that. Usually they send him off to the flat one on one. If he hits him, he's gone. Oh yeah, he's oh, yeah. gone. No, he's on that he would have been. Yep. Nobody behind him. So Shoot. second and ten from the Valley Center forty-one yard line. Clock stopped now seven oh four in the first quarter. No score here in Imperial. Tigers first possession after Valley Center went four and out. Fake the handoff. Back to pass again. Going to complete it to Mario Gaxiola, who gets stopped as soon as he catches the ball at the 35-yard line. But that'll be good for a six-yard gain. Third door down and a manageable four. Alex Rodriguez in on the stop for the Jaguars. That should be a third down and three. They're going to give him a forward progress to the 34-yard yep. line. First catch of the nine for Gaxiola. has 13 catches now on the season. Just we, a sophomore, and he's pretty come on the second half of the season. Yeah, yeah we did, didn't even know who he was in the first half. Then all of a sudden, I don't know where he's making all kinds of catches. Yeah. Third down to three Tigers from the Valley Center 34. Ayala hands off to Jimenez on his first carry of the night. He's going to be close to a first down. Let's see where they're going to mark it at. Let's see about the 32-yard line. It could be a couple of yards. Minutes on the season, leading ball carrier for the Tigers with 639 yards. He's number two in the Valley in rushing yards this season. To who? I didn't look that up. I just said number two. <laughs> so they're going for it. Yeah, Tigers yeah. are going to go for it. A fourth down and one from the Valley Center, 32-yard line. We got J.J. and Castro back there. Right. So Yala in the shotgun, running backs on each side of him, gets the snap, hands to Jimenez, gets the first down, and then yeah. some. Still in his feet in a second effort inside the 30-yard line for the 27 gain of five and a first down for the Tigers. Good push. Great push. He didn't get touched until he was past the line of scrimmage. Third first down of this possession for the Tigers and two fourth down conversions. I like seeing that. Yes. So first to 10 Imperial from the 37-yard line. When he hits that linebacker, he pushed him over. And up up the middle, Castro. Castro will get inside the 25. Not the 24. That'll be good for a good three yards. Second down to seven from the 24. Those Jaguars have eight players in the bottom. Running from the 35 down now to the 
for a Valley Center. Back to the pistol. Castro behind Ayala. Fakes a handoff. Back to pass to the flat. Finds the receiver. Going to get it to Gaxio. And a good extra effort. And you have the first down. Down to about the 13-yard line. Excuse me, 14. Let's call it 14-yard line. A gain of 10 in the first down. Great job. I have to check Gillen to fight for that extra yard. Is it Hutchins. Good battle there. Got still at one. Second catch of the night for Gaxiola. First and ten Tigers. Now at the 14 yard line of the Jaguars. Castro with the pistol behind Ayala. Takes the hand off on the left side. Not a whole lot there, but he will get positive yardage. Maybe a couple of yards out of it. It'll be a second down and eight. From about the 12. Well, give him one yard. Like the shoulder's one yard at the 13 yard line. So second down and nine. They need to run that same play, and, and the quarterback keeps the ball. Option, option. Nobody, nobody looked at Nobody looked at it. So second down and nine for the Tigers. Now from the 13 of the Jaguars. Ayala has Castro to his side, fakes the hand up, goes back to pass. Gets the, oh, in and out of the hands of Joel via Campos, who was open in the flat on the far side, incomplete. Third down. Nine from the 13. So the Tigers have the third down and nine at the 13 of the Jaguars. And that could have been a big gainer. As Joel, I think, started running before he got the ball, but there was a lot of room to run out there. And now at third and nine, let's see what the Tigers do here on this offensive play. As Wilson, Robles, and Nixon all go to the far side, the wide side of the field. Jack Seal on the near side. In the shotgun, Ayala with Castro. Fake the handoff, back to pass, under pressure. Throws in the middle, has a receiver open. And just a little bit too far in front of Jaden Wilson. And it will fall incomplete. Fourth down and nine from the 13. And decision time, do we try a field goal? Robles is coming out. If he's got the P. Yep. Robles has been successful on eight of ten field goals this year. His longest, 48 yards, school record, and three over 40. This is going to be lined up at the 31-yard line. This is going to be a 41-yard attempt. No win, so no factor with that, but it is on the right hash mark. And he's a left-footed kicker, so... It seems like it's way over to the right, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's right on the on the uh, yeah. hash mark. Yeah, like I said a soccer style left footed. It's going to be an interesting kick. Let's see what happens. Good snap. Ball is down. Kick is up, and it is good. Oh good. yeah, you betcha. Two fifty remaining in this first quarter of play, and it's now the Tigers three and the Jaguars nothing. Did you know that about 1,000 students from around the Imperial Valley are getting a jump on their college careers by attending IBC classes right now on their own high school campus? Ask us about our dual enrollment programs, available to students at most Imperial Valley high schools. Get started now at the number one community college in the nation. Check us out. For information, go to imperial.edu and search dual enrollment. That's imperial.edu. Hey, Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial is serving the best Japanese cuisine in the Imperial Valley. K Sushi offers you 50 different sushi rolls, plus beer, wine, and sake. And they also have teriyaki chicken or beef, rice and noodles. K Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial. They're open daily from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. K Sushi also caters and welcomes big groups anytime. Call 760-355-4440. That's 355-4444. Your takeout. Kickoff by Robles. We'll go into the end zone. Touchback number 28 of these. Awesome. On that drive for the Tigers, 16 plays. Wow. Good start. 52 yards, used up 7 minutes and 57 seconds off the clock on their first possession of the game. And a 41-yard field goal. That's 4 over 40 this year for Joel Robles. His ninth of the season. And uh, the Tigers have a three to nothing lead. I get so excited for that young man. Oh, I do too. I'm <laughs> so proud of him. Yeah. I keep telling that. I bet he's at it at twenty twenty five yards from last year. Oh, yeah, and that was way, way, way over. Over. That was beautiful. That's yeah. an NFL kick, right? So first and ten, Valley Center from their own twenty yard line. 
Back to pass Mitchell. Heavy rush. Dumps it out and in and off the hand of the intended receiver, Kevin Garcia. But I think the rush had to hurry that one. I'm trying to get a number on that. Oh, Escobar again. He is getting through there. He's getting he through is there. getting through That's there. the third time he's been back there. So second down and 10 from the 20-yard line for Valley Center, their second possession of the night. They went to four and out on their first possession. And Tigers defense putting a lot of pressure on the sophomore quarterback so far in this ballgame. Coming out wide to the left side is Aiden Cuevas. We have two receivers going wide to the right side. And going under center is Mitchell. He has Garcia and getting the handoff over left tackle is Jet Quintus Bailey. And he'll get a couple of yards on it, but a third down and eight coming up from the 22. Arispe, Aaron Arispe, along with Darian Romo. 50... 53 uh, at So third and eight from the 22 for Valley Center. Good job of staying put. Well, somebody got back there, and I forgot the number. Got to grab have, the football. Yeah. <laughs> Tried to grab the football, yeah. slowed him down, right. and then Adispe came in. And the pursuit and stepped in. Yeah. Going back into the shotgun formation is Mitchell, and he'll have Puentes Staley to his right side. And back to pass. A little bit of a high snap. Sets, tries to set up. Going to get flushed out of the pocket. Then throws it as a receiver. Oh. Completes it for the first down to Garcia, who gets gang tackled, but drags the Tigers out to the 48-yard line. First and 10 for Valley Center. A gain of 26 on that one. Woo. They could not bring him down. No. He's big. 6-1 okay. and two fifteen, I believe okay. so. Yeah. It took four Tigers to bring him down. Yep. Good pass from Mitchell under pressure. And uh, found him going on a slant over the middle. So first and ten for Valley Center from their own 48-yard line. Plus, as they've been to the 50-yard line this ball game. The good thing is he can't stay in the pocket. He has to roll. Yeah. He is not he, able to stay. Right. Go Garcia the goes in motion and then stops under center. We'll get the in reverse handoff to him. He'll get into Tigers. Man, he's hard to break Ooh. down. He's going to get all the way down to the Tiger 44-yard line, and that's going to be a gain of six yards, or of eight yards. It would be a second down and two. Again, that, when he got wrapped up, he still carried them at least three yards. Came into the game averaging 7.9 yards a carry. Got eight on that one. Him? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Has 158 yards coming into the game. And now... They bring in Daniel Staley. That's the cousin of Jet in the backfield with Mitchell. High snap. Gets it to Staley over right tackle. He's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. He'll have to fight to get to the line of scrimmage. There'll be no gain. Third down and two from the Tiger 44. Great. Great hands by Arista. He did not let go. Because this kid is strong. This Staley kid, I remember from the last game, he's he, straight up the middle. Yeah. Hard. Yep. Yeah. Kind of an upright runner, too. Not yeah. leaning forward, but he runs hard. But nobody could tackle him. They no. could bring him down. No. Hopefully our tackling got better. Dustin Hotchkiss comes in at a receiver position. That'll be the end of the first quarter of play. With the score, the Imperial Tigers 3 and the Valley Center Jaguars 0. Stan's Auto Body has been serving customers in the Imperial Valley for many years now. Their mission is to be recognized as a premier provider of auto body repair services. Stan's Auto Body also works closely with you and your insurance company on your collision repair. They're committed to delivering superior quality and customer service by exceeding your expectations. Stan's Auto Body thanks you for making them number one with CarWise.com. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial is 100% authentic Mexican cuisine. Their extensive menu features traditional handmade Mexican dishes with nothing but fresh ingredients. El Zarape Restaurant has taken it over the top with their creative ideas like stuffed special quesadillas with carne asada, shrimp, or pollo asada. There are 17 different burritos. El Zarape Restaurant, 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Or call in your order at 760-355-4435. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Pete Lee, Elder in Worcester, Ohio, is telling you about in the pregame at the Buc- Buckeye Book Fair. He says it's in the 40s, clear. Hmm. And had snow on Wednesday. High snap coming back to Mitchell. Throws it over the middle and tipped away by Joel Villa Campos. Great job intended 
for Braylon, for uh, Hotchkiss, but it falls incomplete. It'll be a third down, or make it a fourth down now in two from the 44, and they bring the punt team in. Good great, job. Oh, great Joel. job by Couples. Yep. Closing the gap there. He was beaten. He was able to recover. There's number 70 again. What was his name? McDermott is their punter. Just under 40 yards a punt, average. And deep to receive, go to me. Let's hope we don't see another jump up in the air because that's kind of scary. I don't know my heart can handle that. Good snap back to McDermott. Gets a lot of pressure but gets it off. It's going to hit and go toward the sidelines at about the 30-yard line. So the Tigers are going to have pretty decent field position, about the 29. It's first and 10 for Imperial from the 29. Yeah, he hooked that pretty hard to the left. So the Tigers will have with 11.44 to go in the second quarter. Three-point lead and first to 10 at their own 29-yard line. And as, as Lee Elder points out, too, with it being on the right hash mark and the left foot, a kicker, he said a nice coaching job to put the ball where it would be that to get the most success. So go on with that. Oh, it's easier on that side. Yep. Oh, I did not know that. Not to worry about uh, hooking it or anything like that. You're okay. pushing it. Down, so. Got it. Quick update here, Vincent 14, Bahala 0 in the first. Got Castro in the backfield. Castro in the pistol behind Ayala. Ayala marking out the signals, gets the snap, hands it off to Castro, penalty flags go up. Might see some movement by the Tigers. I that. didn't see anything. And there will be yep. false start against Imperials to so bring it back. So make it a first and 15 and bring it back to the 24-yard line. Only the second penalty of the game. The Tigers were called on a penalty on the first punt by Valley Center on their initial possession of the game. Just the second penalty. Okay. Jack Silva comes to the sideline. Wilson goes out onto the field. And Ayala brings the play in from the sideline. Yeah, Vincent Memorial, about how oh, 14 nothing that quick. Yep. Scott's ranked number one, Division 5. Put enough to points this year. Imagine they're playing at Southwest High School tonight, I'm thinking. Since Kalexi goes at home. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Castro stays in the backfield along with Ayala. Take the handoff, back to pass. Throws a deep, looking for Nixon. Catches it. At the 38-yard line, penalty flag goes down. But I believe that's going to go against Valley Center. What a great job of getting the ball in the air and Nixon to go get it. I couldn't tell it. I was locked here, but I couldn't tell if he held on to that. He held on to it. I think the Valley Center defensive back was thinking it was going to go deeper. And when he tried to come back, that's when he grabbed a hold of Nixon. So it's going to go against them. And it will be pass interference against Valley Center. Declined getting the yardage out to the 40-yard line. And the Tigers have a first and 10 at their own 40. Got to keep losing Got to keep doing that. <laughs> I like the way Nixon was patting Ayala on the back. Let's do it again, he said. Uh, yeah, let's just keep going, keep going, keep going. I like it. <laughs> Astro stays in the backfield with Ayala. Gets the call right up the middle. Gets hit by the Valley Center interior line, but drags them out to the 46. And a gain of six, second down and four. Good push. Good push by Castro. Gained another two or three yards on his own. Ayala comes to the sideline to get the play from the coach. That six-yard gain now gives him 25 yards on seven carries in the first half for Castro. He'll stay in the lineup to the right side of Ayala this time. The snap. And it off Castro up the middle. Castro pours his way into Valley Center side. We'll get the first down at the 49 and a first down again for the Tigers. He carried four Jaguars right there. And he just pushed him. Wasn't much there and he got five yards. That was on his own. All on his own, yeah. So the Tigers now on Valley Center side of the field at the 49 yard line. First and 10 Imperial. Nixon will come wide to the near side. Gaxiola wide right. Tigers will have tight ends on each side of the field. Castro to the right side of Ayala in the backfield, running from the shotgun, as usual. Now they get the snap, and it off Castro again. Castro, it's still stutter step and fumbled the ball, but the ground caused the fumble. His Valley Center picked it up, but he had already gone down at the 41-yard, no, 46-yard line. 
should be a gain of three, second down and seven. Yeah, he reached. He was trying to get extra yards right. when he reached. This knee was already down. So second down and seven from the 46 of Valley Center. 9.34 to go in this first half of play. It's Imperial 3, Valley Center 0. Jaden Wilson in the lineup. Now goes split out to the left side. Gaxiola split out to the right. Going from the pistol. Ayala fakes it. Throws over the middle. Has a receiver. He caught it. Second effort by Gio Robles. It catches the ball at the 34-yard line, a 33, and a first down for the Tigers, a gain of 13. That went off number two shoulder pad. And I think I think Gio had already closed his eyes. And second catch for Gio on the night. There's a 13-yarder, 22 yards on the night. And then hit the shoulder pad, bounced up, and he's able to one-hand that, left-handed, on the way down. He's just an amazing athlete. Yeah. Basketball season right around the corner. You've got to go watch him oh, play yeah. basketball. He and Jared Nixon both. Yeah. First and 10 Tigers from the 33 of the Jaguars. Ayala goes back to pass. Steps into the pocket. Rolls to his right. Throws it. Has a receiver. Completes. Oh, in and out of the hands of Robles. He was running. Or did he catch it? He did catch it. I wasn't sure, but he came down awkwardly on his knee, which he's had some trouble with. He gets up, and he's going to limp off. But he will complete the pass on a first down for the Tigers. And it's going to be placed at about the 12-yard line. It's going to be a 21-yard catch by Robles, but he'll come to the sideline. Don't like seeing him limping like that. The right knee gave out on him. He had to turn, and when he plants it with his right foot at the lead leg, it just rolled on him. Well, and you were telling me before we went on that, that he was kind of gingerly on it anyway because yeah. he had the pain yeah. with a sprained knee throughout this season. But a good 21-yard catch, and it's a first and 10 from the Jaguar 12. And off to Castro. Castro could be hit behind the line of scrimmage and uh, will fight his way to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down and 10. Robert Jocelyn with the Jaguars in on the tackle. Got him with his first. So Castro comes out, and J.J. goes in. So second down and 10, Tigers knocking on the door. Their last possession got down to the 13-yard line, and they're between the 12 and 13 right now with a second down and 10. J.J. Menison now in the backfield along with Ayala. A little bit more size. Hits the handoff up the middle, and he pushes his way for positive yardage. He'll get about three, maybe four yards going to mark it a gain of three, so a third down now and seven. And they'll put the ball about the nine-yard line. He looks like he's moving okay right now. I I just, might have just, it might have been a little bit of pain, but then scaring him a little bit. I don't blame him. We talked about that before the game. You had your Achilles just split on you a few years ago, and, and you say you still kind of ginger on it. And I, I broke an ankle, and I think I tore the ligaments, even though they said they were stretched to them. That was 40 years ago, and it's still tender, so I can understand <laughs> you'd, you'd be a little scared. Ayala runs over to the side, talks to Nixon, and then gets back into his position in the shotgun. Timeout. And a timeout's going to be called by the Tigers. Didn't want to get a delay game no. there. So with 6.21 to go in this first half of play, it's now the Tigers 3 and the Jaguars 0. Roto-Rooter, your plumbing and drain cleaning specialist. Roto-Rooter offers full services from hydro jetting to camera inspection, water heaters, faucets, garbage disposal, anything that's clogged up. They'll take care of the problem right. Roto-Rooter is a locally owned family business with 60 years in the Imperial Valley. Call the experts at 760-352-6789 or 344-2533 on the north end. Roto-Rooter, when drains don't work, we do. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, full, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Ayton Road in Imperial. 
Kyla chipping in from Middleton, Idaho. My sister Kyla, hey. class of 75, 47 degrees and foggy up there. Burr. <laughs> and Jonathan and Nora and the boys listening in from back awesome. in Lee, Kansas. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, and Peter and Caleb and Sam and Andrew, the biggest funny forever, and back to Pasha's Ayala. Oh, going to have a lot of pressure. Going to throw in the corner of the end zone for a rope lander jump. And no good. Got out of his hands in the corner of the end zone, upset with himself to not have brought it down. The pass was there. It was there. And the catch was there. It, was it just there. got out of his hands. Did you see how he tried to land on his left leg yeah, instead I, of his right? I, I think he was I thinking think that, that too. So it'll be a fourth and seven from the nine, and Robles. We'll be coming back in for another field goal attempt. Nice pass to Bayala. Oh, that did was a great good. job under a lot of pressure. I, I didn't know if he'd seen that guy coming around the far end. Oh, and he was coming back. He was coming too. back. Yeah. <laughs> so the ball this time will be placed at the 18-yard line. So we're looking at a 28-yard attempt by Robles. Oh. Resets it. Has Ayala as his holder. He's got to hurry up a little bit so we don't get a delay on that. Closer to the 19th, we're going to call this a 29-yard attempt. Good snap. Ball is down. Kick is up. And it is good. Good. So with 6.09 remaining in the first half of play, it's now the Tigers 6 and the Jaguars 0. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending players to special training. Through their fundraising efforts, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They are always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! Mmm, Johnny's Burritos. An Imperial Valley tradition since 1963. Three locations, Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Delicious burritos, including your favorite breakfast burritos, made just the way you like it. Tacos and taquitos, sandwiches, burgers, carne asada fries, and so much more. And don't forget, they're delicious Johnny's Sweet Tea. Johnny's Burritos in Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Ten-play drive this time for the Tigers, going 62 yards and catch by the 29-yard field goal by Joel Robles, who then has touchback number 29. Two on the night. The 29. On the so 6:09 on the clock in this first half of play. Valley Center with the ball, first and ten. They'll have it at their own 20-yard line. Well, it's trying to tell you that we went 10 minutes between commercials here. Yeah, oh, that's and it's right. been, and it's been a quick over. first half, too. Game's only been going on for 38 minutes. Maybe some of that cutting us out from the canal bank. I'm will telling you, I see that smoke, yeah. and I, I didn't eat dinner tell. tonight, so I don't know what you mean. Hopefully so, there'll still be some over there. <laughs> first and 10 Valley Center, they'll be at their own 20-yard line. And they'll back up the right side of the line, and under center is Mitchell. Pitches it out to Jet Staley around the right side. He'll be hit at the line of scrimmage. Gets away from the initial line, and then he's got a lot of pursuit to try to get through. He'll only get a yard out of it. And it'll be a second down and nine, but he wouldn't come down. Who, who hit him? His first hit. Was that Romo? Or I'm not sure. Gilma. He bounced off a bunch of different guys. I think it's Kekjola. No, that can't be Kekjola. They're going to give him a two-yard gain on that. So it'll be a second down and eight from the 22. It gives him eight yards on three carries. Their leading ball carrier came into the game with 499 yards on the season. Two wide receivers each side of the field this time for Mitchell, but then bring Garcia in as the slot back on the right. Back to pass, rolling out to his right as Mitchell gets rid of it. Has a receiver in and off the hand. Got a little bit too far out in front of the intended receiver on the far side of the field. And obedience to Hotchkiss. It'll be a second down now, or third down now, and eight from the 22. Back to pass with Mitchell. Now 
Bulls at a time throws away over center receiver on the near sideline. Moves the center for Lincoln Zetmeyer will call it incomplete. Fourth down and eight. Now that's a punt. Another four and out. I'm not sure who it was on the Tiger sideline who caught the ball, but they're pretty excited. 62. <laughs> Alive, there you go. Tri City over Calipat 7 0. The second. The back to punt. McDermott will get the punt off, and Nordmite's going to stay away from a good job of doing that. The ball hits the 44 yard line and will roll across the 50 to the Tiger 49. And that's the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 from their own 49-yard line with 4.58 to go in the first half, but leading it 6-0. Tiger Geeks did such an awesome job both the pass and the run. They really are. The only one that hurt was that big tight end. That catch after, or run after catch. Take over possession from their own 49 yard line. Castro comes back into the backfield. Pass gonna come out to the flat way Tender receiver Jaden Wilson, who was open in the flat, was yeah. going complete. It'll be a second down and ten. Good job to get his fingers on that. He thought it was a backwards pass. So was... Thirteenth pass on the night by Ayala. He's completed six of them for seventy-six yards. Maybe move the phone away from it, maybe. Okay. There we go. Second down and 10 for the Tigers from their own 49-yard line. Stops the clock with 4.54 to go in the first half. Tigers 6, Jaguars 0. Opening game, CIF Division 3 football. 7th-ranked Tigers, 10th-rated Jaguars. Ayala hands it off to Castro. Castro up the middle, get across the 50-yard line to about the 48 of the Jaguars. A gain of three, it'll be a third down and seven. No response yet. 36 yards rushing for Castro on 11 carries. He has three carries and 10 yards in the rushing department for the Tigers. And Robles comes off limping a little bit to the side. Yes. Phoenix comes to the side. Castro also comes to the sideline. And he menace in the backfield. Yeah. Now with Ayala. He meant it to Wilson. And then... So Ayala will send out He meant it's out into the near side flat. He's going to throw it out to him. Little bubble screen. Catches the ball. to the 45-yard line to the 40. Gets the first down. Still on his feet. Down to the 37-yard line of Valley Center. And a first down for the Tigers on a gain of 11. Good, jo- good job by J.J. Who fight for extra yardage. From the beginning, though, Jaden Wilson made a good block. Nice, nice play call and execution. Yeah. So first and ten, Tigers now at the Valley Center 37-yard line with 3.45 to go in the first half. Wilson comes to the sideline now, and Robles comes back into the lineup, goes out to the right side in uh, the flanker position with Gaxiola out right. Nixon is to the left. Hand it off to Jimenez. Jimenez gets hit to the line of scrimmage, will dive forward to about the 37, so... He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a second down and 10. Yeah, right back to the line of scrimmage. Not much there, but mix it up a little bit. I like that. So second down and 10 for the Tigers. Three minutes to go in this first half of play. It's Imperial 6, Valley Center 0. On a pair of field goals by Joel Robles, who now has 10 on the season. Ayala handed off Jimenez. Jimenez gets hit behind oh. the line of scrimmage and nowhere to go. He'll get a yard. Maybe. I'm not oh. sure. They're going to say no, no yardage at all. He's on that. upset about that one. I think if he got one more step, well, it's a, he's, that's all he's, he needed. All, he's seen all that open space out there. Oh. So it's third down and 10 at the 37. Valley Center defense coming up strong right here. 
Ayala comes to the sideline, talks to head coach David Shaw to get the play call. He joins his team in the huddle. Seeing the Tigers in a huddle more often this game. Do they have? Yeah. They have. I know they have. Yeah, I don't like use, that going to the sideline. Use that no huddle, but they, yeah, he's been running to the sideline and getting it. Fake the handoff rolling to his right side. Y'all are going to throw oh. it. Oh, and he's going to throw a roll. Man, coming out of nowhere to almost make the catches via compost. I didn't but I thought it was going to be an interception when it just floated out there. I didn't even see it be a compost. Yeah, and he just dove and it went off his fingertips. So it'll go incomplete, and a fourth and ten coming up at the 37. The Tigers will need to punt. Yeah, if he had Campos doesn't go after that ball, that guy intercepts. Yeah, intercepts. There's no question because he was coming up for it. Yeah, I didn't even see the Campos out Yeah, What he doing? He made, it, he doing? <laughs> made it close. He almost got it. So Robles will come in to punt. Deep to receive will be Jet Puentes Staley. And he goes all the way back to the goal line. I snap. And Robles just a little pooch kick. And it will hit at the 15-yard line. The Tigers will let it roll out of bounds inside the 15. And that's his fifth inside the 20 this year. So good job by Robles on the pooch kick. Yep, and send yep. Valley Center back inside the 15-yard line at the 13. Nice job. Yeah, making those length of the field. All right. So a minute 49 to go in the first half. Tigers leading at 6 to nothing, And the Tigers will get the football in the second half. Played a pretty good ball game. So far, yes, you always want to get touchdowns at the end of drives, but to get two field goals and hold the opposition scoreless so far is a pretty big deal, especially when it's Valley Center. Back to pass, going to complete it out to Garcia out to the left side, but the Tigers are going to cover it good. It'll be a loss on the play of maybe a yard. It'll be a second down and about 11. Oh. The Tigers' defense converges on that really quick. Via Campos, right? Yeah. Great job by Via Campos. I couldn't see the number. To fight off the... The blocker, and then take that big boy down all by himself. They'll say no gain. It'll be a second and ten from the 13. Back to pass and going to pass and complete it, but for a short gain. As the Tigers are all over the receiver at the 19-yard line. No, not quite to the 19. At the 18. be about a six-yard gain, so a third down and four coming up. And they'll have it at about the 18-yard line. Didn't see who caught that one. I, think I didn't see the catch. Might have been seven. I'm going to go ahead and credit him with that. Six yard gain. Oh. Back to pass again. Oh. It's going to be Mitchell, and Mitchell looks over the middle, has a receiver in Inter- traffic. Might have been intercepted. Oh, no. no it's incomplete. Wow. Who came up on that? Eddie Martinez. Eddie Martinez, yeah. yeah. To break that one up. I thought Eddie picked that up. No, I thought he had thrown it. I'm already looking down the field. I just don't, can't see the ball. And he, then he came out and rolled to the left. So, so a fourth down and four, and they're going to have to punt it. And it's going to have to be a good snap, but it's going to have to get out quick. Oh, they had to go for this right now. Yeah, Campos had to just go for it and try to block it if he runs into the kicker. 42 seconds remaining in this first half. And a fourth and four. From their own 18 yard line. Good snap back. McDermott just Ooh. does get it off. Whoa. Levi Alpha. Levi Mitchell him. just about got it. It's going to be a good punt. It'll roll inside Tiger territory to the 40 yard line, inside the 40 to the 39. And the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 at their own 39 with 28 seconds remaining in this first half. Got an update on the Central East Lake game. Let's take a look. You see, oh, East Lake 7, Central nothing in the second. And he says we sound good again. So do we take a knee or do we throw it? No, nope, they're going to take a knee. Yep, Tigers will take a knee. 28 seconds to go in the half. And the Tigers will get the football in the second half. Now Yala will go down to one knee, and that will be the end of this first half. With the Thunder score, Club. Imperial 6, Valley Center 0. And we'll be back to recap the scoring. And the stats for you in just a moment. 
Hi, this is Jason Jackson, owner of Southwest Security. Two years ago, I opened Southwest Postal, offering you 24-hour access 365 days a year. So if you're tired of dealing with the inconvenience of our post office hours and you would like to be able to get your mail when you want, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, in the middle of the night, then come visit us at Southwest Postal with 24-hour staff. Plus, we're also your local FedEx, DHL, and Postal Service Center. We even offer text message and email notification when you receive your mail. Southwest Postal at the corner of Fourth and Hyle in El Centro. Wake up with us at Broken Yolk Cafe. Open daily at 7 a.m., serving you your favorite breakfast. From omelets, pancakes, how about eggs, Benedict, waffles, and yes, Mexican breakfast, too. Broken Yolk Cafe also serves lunch till 2 p.m. From sandwiches, salads, and yes, of course, the all-American cheeseburgers. You can order online at Broken Yolk Cafe El Centro or call 760-352-9655. That's 352-9655. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Tigers leading the Valley Center 6-0 to zero here at the half in Imperial in the opening round of Division Three CIF football in the playoffs. And the Tigers would get on the board first with 2.49 to go in the first quarter of play on a 16-play, 52-yard drive. That the use of 7.57 up the clock, almost eight minutes of the first quarter was used up on that. And it was capped by a 41-yard field goal by Joe Robles. That's his fourth this season of... 40 yards or longer. Yep. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it really yeah, is. Made it set, uh, three to zero, and then the, they would then add to that by a 10 play, 62 yard drive, a little bit longer on the second one, but didn't use quite as much time. 10 play, 62 yards, using 535 off the clock, and a 29 yard field goal by Robles at 609 left in the first half, and that gives us our halftime score of 6-0 to zero as the Pride of Imperial Band is out on the field to entertain the crowd here at halftime. For the Tigers offensively, Jaden Ayala would complete 6 of 15 passes for 87 yards, 3 for 43 to Gio Robles. And almost had the touchdown in the corner of the end zone. That was, that was, yeah, was Gio. That was not on the court, right. quarterback there. No, not at all. That was a good pass, and it just... just not able to hold on to it. Uh, Mario Gaxiola, two catches, 17 yards. Jared Wolf, uh, Jared Nixon had one for 16 yards. And then J.J. Menace, one for 11 yards for the 87. And then the Tigers on the rushing department. Castro with 36 yards on 11 carries. Menace, five carries for 10 yards. The Tigers have 46 pass uh, rushing and 87 on the air, and 133 of okay. offense in the first half. For Valley Center, Braylon Mitchell has completed two of ten passes for 32 yards. Both of those would go to Kevin Garcia. And then rushing, they just haven't been able to move the ball on the Tiger defense. Oh. Jeff St- uh, Prentice Staley, three carries, eight yards. Kevin Garcia, one carry, eight yards. Braylon Mitchell, minus one. Daniel Staley, zero. So you're looking at minus one net rushing yardage and 32 yards passing. That's it. That's it, 31 oh. yards. They've gone three and out, what, three times in the game? Great. So the defense is just playing oh, great. lights out right now yeah. for the Tigers, and Imperial will get the football for the second half to start out. So um, right now things looking pretty good for the Tigers. But, again, when it's just six to nothing, one touchdown, ties it up, an extra yeah. point would put them ahead. So, can't be comfortable at all, but you got to feel good about the way the, the team has played so yes, far. Yeah, we they're doing a great job. I didn't know it was that good, but we, I knew they were doing well. We're usually a pretty good second half team, and I talked yeah. to, to yeah. David Shell before the game, and I said, George and I've been wanting to know what kind of halftime speech you make, because everybody comes out really inspired in the second half, and so he kind of loud, and he says. I really can't tell you what I said. And I said, okay. I said, is it one of those win-win for the Gipper speeches? And he laughed and he said, we went in last week only up by eight points, remember? And uh, he said, I told the coaches, let's just stay calm and run the course and, and we'll be okay. And he says, 
And then I lost it. <laughs> we both had a good giggle out of it. But uh, usually the Tigers come out in the second half and, uh, and really get things going. And so we'll see if adjustments can be made and uh, get some more completions, yeah. you know, to get up to, to over 50% of the completions. And we've had a decent running game, but not a great one tonight on that. So no. got to get some running as well. But the defense is just playing really, really well. Right I'll, take, I'll take seven more points and let the defense win the game. Yeah, yeah that would be nice. That would be nice. Get a victory. The winner tonight will be in Fallbrook next week. And uh, Fallbrook has seeded number two in Division Three, And we'll take a look at uh, what the other games are and uh, our halftime or updated scores from our Valley schools, and all that will be coming up in just a moment. Did you know that about 1,000 students from around the Imperial Valley are getting a jump on their college careers by attending IBC classes right now on their own high school campus? Ask us about our dual enrollment programs, available to students at most Imperial Valley high schools. Get started now at the number one community college in the nation. Check us out. For information, go to imperial.edu and search dual enrollment. That's imperial.edu. Hey, Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial is serving the best Japanese cuisine in the Imperial Valley. K Sushi offers you 50 different sushi rolls, plus beer, wine, and sake. And they also have teriyaki chicken or beef, rice and noodles. K Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial. They're open daily from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. Hey, Sushi also caters and welcomes big groups anytime. Call 760-355-4440. That's 355-4444. Your takeout. Stan's Auto Body has been serving customers in the Imperial Valley for many years now. Their mission is to be recognized as a premier provider of auto body repair services. Stan's Auto Body also works closely with you and your insurance company on your collision repair. They're committed to delivering superior quality and customer service by exceeding your expectations. Stan's Auto Body thanks you for making them number one with CarWise.com. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. Six to zero, halftime score. Tigers leading Valley Center as the Pride of Imperial Band is out on the field. And George, you have the updated scores. Yeah, we sure do. We have Vincent over Valhalla, twenty-one nothing in the second. Eastlake still seven nothing over Central, also in the second. And last we got was Tri City seven, Calipatria zero. Oh, and we get Sweetwater fifteen. Southwest, eight. Eight, yes. Yeah, so there's still the ball game on that. So, um, Valley School's doing pretty well so far tonight and uh, leading or close to leading in all those games. And uh, when we look at the different matchups in Division Three, the uh, number one seed was Mission Bay. They will have a bye, and they will play the winner of the Patrick Henry El Capitan game next week. And then the number two seed, as we mentioned, is Fallbrook, and they'll play the winner of this game tonight up in Fallbrook. And the number three seed was West Hills. That's right. Yeah. That and should that, have been us. That should have been us. Yeah, exactly. should have been and us. David right. was saying that, too, that, yeah, that could very well have been Imperial. as The Tigers lost that one 14-7, to but was leading at the half. The West Hills, the number three seed, they have a bye. They will play the winner of the La Jolla Country Day Morse game tonight. And then the number four seed, which really kind of surprised me, was Grossmont. We ended up at the fourth seed, and they will play the winner of the Santa Fe Christian San Diego High School game tonight. They'll play that one next week. So that's what uh, Division Three looks like. And Division Two, that Central and Brawley are in, uh, the number one seed there is Del Norte. And we had them, the Blackhawks, played here in Imperial a couple of times in the playoffs. They have a bye. They will play the winner of the Oceanside Steel Canyon game tonight. And the number two seed is uh, Rancho Bernardo, that's the team that, uh, name escapes me now, that played for the Chargers. Eric Weddle well, is their Weddle. coach yeah. of, yeah, and they will play the winner of the Bishop's Brawley game tonight. The number three seed is La Jolla, and they will play, the, they have a bye to nine, they will play the winner of the Central and East Lake game next week in La Jolla. And then Scripps Ranch was the number four seed. They, they will play the winner of the Point Loma San Squall game next week. And so that's what Division Two looks like. And then in, uh, let's see, Division Four, and that's the division that Calexico is in. Calexico playing Escondido tonight. 
The Bulldogs number eight, and Escadito number nine. The winner of that game will play number one seeded Mount Miguel. We played them before, and uh, they're ranked number one in Division Four. The second seeded team is Chula Vista. They have a bye tonight. They will play the winner of Escadito Charter and Olympian game next week. The number three seed is Westview, who uh, Valley Center played and lost two earlier in the season. Did they lose to Valley? I'll have to check on that. Let me let me see on that before I say it. I know they played Westview, but let me see whether... Uh, no, they defeated Westview along with Vista Escondido and last week over Oceanside. So that was one of the four straight that the Valley Sinners on a four-game win streak with against Westview. They will play the winner of the Bonita Vista Coronado game. The number four seed is Santana. We've seen them a few times before in yeah. the past. And they will be playing the winner of the Orange Glen Crawford game okay. next week in Division Number Four. In Division Number Five, the number one seed is Vincent Memorial. They're playing Valhalla tonight. The winner of that will play the winner of the number four seeded Hoover and number five seeded Monta Vista next week. And the higher seed will have a home, which will be Vincent Memorial. And then uh, at the bottom part of the bracket, number two is Sweetwater. They're playing Southwest tonight is the number seven seed. And then number six, Kearney, is playing at number three, El Cajon Valley. That's Division Five. And then there's the new Division Five Double A, and that's what Hopeville is the top seed of. They have a bye this week, and they will play the winner of number four, Rock Academy, and number five, Maranatha Christian. And then I'm not sure who they had as the number two seed. Oh, it's Army Navy is the number two seed. They will play the winner of the number three Tri-City Christian, number six Calipatry regime next week. So that kind of gives you a rundown of what all the divisions are. There's just uh, there's Brawley and Central in Division Two, Imperial is the Lone Valley team in Division Three, and Clutch to the Lone Division Four team, Southwest and Vincent Memorial in Division Five, and then Hopewell and Calipatry in Five AA. So I would I would like to see Calipat move on. To the next round, possibly. But Tony Leone's done a great job. Yeah. First year coach down yeah. with the Hornets, and, and they've had a tough road to hoe the last few years. Yeah. And he's starting to change that whole uh, winning mentality to get that, back with the Hornets. You know, they that, used to have very I'm good excited. ball clubs back in the day, and and to see them starting to come up with some wins, and then other games that were very close is yeah. very you know it's been nice to see with them. So we're glad to see uh, how they're doing, and and uh, hope we continue to see those winning ways yeah. with the Hornets of North. Yeah, I'm happy for Tony. Good guy. Yep, good guy. Halftime score, Imperial 6, Vincent Memorial 0, and we'll be back with more halftime in just a moment. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial is 100% authentic Mexican cuisine. Their extensive menu features traditional handmade Mexican dishes with nothing but fresh ingredients. El Zarape Restaurant has taken it over the top with their creative ideas like stuffed special quesadillas with carne asada, shrimp, or pollo asada. There are 17 different burritos. El Zarape Restaurant, 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Or call in your order at 760-355-4435. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Roto-Rooter, your plumbing and drain cleaning specialist. Roto-Rooter offers full services from hydro jetting to camera inspection, water heaters, faucets, garbage disposal, anything that's clogged up. They'll take care of the problem right. Roto-Rooter is a locally owned family business with 60 years in the Imperial Valley. Call the experts at 760-352-6789 or 344-2533 on the north end. Roto-Rooter, when drains don't work, we do. Got a, a text from Rick Sharp back in Mississippi. He says, close game, great call. The coach needs another win-win for the Gipper speech at halftime. And then he said, oh, those El Zarape commercials are making me want to stuff carne asada <laughs> quesadilla. I agree. I am hungry, Rick. I haven't eaten tonight. And uh, so he wants to he'll teleport it if we can do that and send that back there. But thanks for checking in with us, Rick, and listening in every week from the they Gulf do the, Coast of Mississippi. Yeah, long way from here. Yeah. They, they do have the best. Special case of the oh, yeah. well, that and, and to stuff them with shrimp. That's yeah. my favorite. I, I don't shrimp. know why. But the carne asada, but still, uh, the shrimp nortini they have. It's, it, you know, I look at their menu, and I'll look at, at places, and I'll look at that, and I end up going back to the same thing. It's so good. <laughs> and their shrimp nortini is just outstanding. So, yeah, I, I'll look at the rest of the menu. And go, yeah, I know. no, shrimp nortini. Yeah, that's it. But the... Uh, but the carne asada or the the carne asada stuffed quesadilla or the shrimp stuffed quesadilla, either one, 
I'm good. And and we used to get the you. Jerry Murphy special. Mm. Well, Jerry. That was uh, carne asada with a bunch of pepper on it and six butterfly shrimp. Ooh. ooh and we split that. Oh, God. Man, you're making me hungry now. That's good. And across the way, on the visiting side, they have fired up a grill there, so we're smelling from the smoke that's walking <laughs> over to this, and that's not fair either when we haven't eaten. See the two guys standing over there at the 25? Uh-huh. Is that the old coach? Sure, he stands on the like left, him. it sure looks like it. Yeah, sure Rob Gilster, who Gilster, was there for yeah. 28 years. I think he was the only coach at Valley Center until, until now. Yeah, well, last year, and then uh, up to now with Tom Butler. I sure do. He stands like the him. way he stands. It does. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, you can look on the binoculars and see, but I can't really tell because he's sideways, sideways to us. Yeah. But you're right. He does stand like uh, Rob. And it was always a joy to go up to Valley Center. So many times we'd come That's home disappointed. So, yeah. But uh, but they always treated us so well up gracious there. Gracious hosts. Yeah, yeah very sure. gracious hosts. And they have two different uh, press boxes, and they would give one to us. Just yes, to us. one to <laughs> us. And so. Our uh, coaches would be above us, and we would be on on the floor of the press box. And uh, the only thing was their band played so loud, at <laughs> time. Oh my goodness. and they played right in front of you. And uh, the grandstands are, are angled such yeah. that See, they're huh? really close to you. Yeah. And man, when they would fire up the band, something it, but I couldn't even they, hear you. It sounded great. We, yeah, we could hear each other, but we enjoyed the music. So it was kind of cool when they'd get their band out there. And one of the the uh, traditions they've had that I've always thought was cool, too, is that the field is in a natural valley. Oh, and so yeah. that when the players would come on the field, remember, they would come down on the grandstands from the yeah. top, remember? Yeah. And they would run down to the field. And I always thought that was kind of a cool tradition that I haven't seen at any other school that I've done games at, I think, over my career. And so to see that about the first time, that's pretty cool. And, yeah, then, I remember, and then the view you had there. Yeah, the orchards. I remember oh, all the oh. avocado groves and the orchards and the and rolling hills, right. just the and first could, time it just took my breath away. Kind of peek out the right side of the press box when the sun was going down yeah. and seeing a sunset. And, yeah, it, and it's it was, country. It's country. It's, it's country. country. I like it. Yeah, Valley Center is a really pretty place. It's up northeast of Escondido if you've never been there. And if you haven't, take a trip up there. Yeah. It's a really pretty place. The Harris Casino is right the other side of the I think, hill. I think the first time that Jonathan and I went there, I said, Kind of reminds me of what you think Tuscany would look like, you know, because the way the rolling hills yeah. and the orchards yeah. and everything else. And so, very, very pleasant place to go around, too. Both teams are back out on the field now. And uh, once again, Valley Center's in all white uniforms with uh, black or dark blue numbers and uh, black helmets with the Jaguar, similar to the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL on the side. And the Tigers in all red uniforms tonight with white trim. And, uh, Nice little contrast, and then we have the big white eye in the middle of the field with a red outline. Always makes it look nice. They did yeah. that, I think, it was for homecomings when they did it first, and yeah. then it's last yeah. and they touched it up yeah. every game. So it looks it's still looking pretty sharp after a few games. So that's nice to see. The Tigers will be uh, receiving the ball here in this second half, leading the game by a score of six to nothing, holding on to it a tight lead. But uh, the Tigers have been the ones moving the football in the first half. They just Got stalled when it got close to the goal line, but then with a great field goal kicker like we have gotten, Joe Robles, who has kicked two field goals tonight and 10 on the season. If he were to get two more this season, that would tie the career field goal of Ethan Gonzalez. Oh, okay. 12. So if he could get okay. two more, he would be up there. But right now he's already set a school record of eight, or now 10 in a season, so he's extended that. The previous record was seven, and uh, so he's extended up to ten, and also a 48-yard field goal earlier this year that was the longest in school history, and he has kicked four field goals exceeding 40 yards, and for high school, that's terrific. That is awesome. You know, there's one, one more thing I was going to bring up, and I had forgotten about it till right now, and it was, uh, you know, I told you in the past that we've talked about players that have played on this field that have gone and played somewhere else in college. San Diego State's field goal kicker, Played at West Hills. Really? And kicked a 61 yard field goal just a few weeks ago. Oh, which is a school record. And yeah, and he, he played that. Uh, his last name is Browning. Let me look and see if I can find the uh, his first name. But yeah, he, he played that. Did we get Jack Browning. Pick? Jack Browning. Yep. Yep, we signed play. He didn't kick any field goals that game. Ball's going to be kicked, and it dies at the 25, but the Tigers will cover over it. 
alertly because that ball is alive after yeah. it goes 10 yards via compost will dive on it. And the Tigers will have the ball first and 10. They'll be at their own 24-yard line. Then earlier you mentioned about you and Jonathan mm-hmm. calling the Robert Thomas game. That yeah, is, yeah, we, we did. I was living in India at the time. I got to watch one of his games okay. in Hopeville. Okay. That's the only game I got to watch. Fast. Jonathan was in high school. And he, he elected not to try to play football. So I said, well, let's do football games on the radio. And he, awesome. said, and he did a good job. San Diego Union did a, a nice little article about us as a father and son team with him in high school in Colin Color. And I was going to go over right side to Castro, steps back into the middle of the line. We'll get good yardage of about five yards. Good. And it'll be about four yards. Four yards. Down yeah. and six. That was a good push by Castro there. That would be cool, though, that this is you and Jonathan. Yeah, we, we did a good he job. That he, he's like you, very knowledgeable. I'm not a big football fanatic like I used to be. Mm-hmm. But you guys did a great job. Right. Well, thank Enjoy you. Enjoy listening to you. And I'm right next to you. <laughs> Second down and six for the Tigers. Ayala. Hands off Castro again on the left Ooh. side. Man, turns right and then runs into white jerseys at the 31-yard line. Be a gain of a couple of yards. Yeah, he took the wrong turn there. Yeah. Oh, man, he, he got hit hard. Three. I know number, three was there. Right, Daniel Stady was one. I know that yeah. came up and stuck hard. Daniel uh, Jr., six foot and 180. But a third down and about four for the Tigers. And the ball resting at around the 36 or 31-yard line, looks like. Yeah, he kind of turned the wrong way on that one. Yeah. Like, ouch. I could feel that one up here. 42 yards on 13 carries for Castro. Stays in the lineup. Ayala in the shotgun. First possession, second half. Fake the handoff. Good throw it out the flat. Has wide open. Oh. Jared Nixon will get the first down out to about the 38-yard line. So first and 10 Tigers. Good job from Ayala to Nixon. Yes. If it, Nixon would have seen that the kid was probably seven yards or better off of him, he could have turned that up. But his momentum kept, kept him going out of bounds. Wide open. That was that was. Right. Cool. We need to keep doing that till yeah, they close the exactly. frank. Because there's nobody. Oh. So first and ten for the Tigers at their own 38 yard line. Clock stopped at 10:08 to go in this third quarter. Imperial six, Valley Center zero. You know what? We ought to see if we can get a direct line to Damon, Coach Saw. See if we can give him the place. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We see a lot up here. Yeah, Ayala's going to carry it, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and then get dumped again. Oh. Staley is in there. And also coming up to make the stop, Michael Santana. Oh, uh, really slow. Second down and 10. That's really his first actual run tonight. And it, it, uh, I did not like it. No, <laughs> it was not. He, he was slow to get up. And, yeah. oh, oh. Kind of limped over to the sideline yeah. to get the play call and limped back over to the... He's stretching it out. That's it. Stretching Here we it. go. Nixon will come... Wide to the near side, Via Campos will go on to the wing left. And then on the far side, it looks like is it Robles and Gexio. Gentile. And Yellow back to pass. The set up. Pump. Then throws it. Get it completed to Gexio. We'll get it the first down at the 50 yard line. Going to be dragged out of bounds at the 49 of Valley Center and a first down for Imperial. I like what they did. They sent uh, Robles deep and the uh, Two DBs went with him, and it was one-on-one for Gexiola. 13-yard gain in the first and 10 Tigers from the Valley Center 49. That puts Ayala over 100 yards passing tonight. wonderful. 107. Oh, I hit my phone. 8 of 17 on the night. Escondido 21, Calexico 6. Ooh. Sweetwater 21, Southwest 8. Okay. Things are turning around for the Valley teams. Yep. So first and 10 from the 49 of Valley Center. Handoff Castro is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Slammed down at the line of scrimmage. Coming up to make the stop, Dustin Hotchkiss. No gain. Second down and 10. Threw him right down to the ground. Spun him around. 42 yards rushing on 14 carries for Castro. Yeah, Hotchkiss, six foot and 170. Six he plays seven. bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> The menace will come into the lineup as Castro will go to the side. Yeah, he threw him right down. Yeah, I thought it might be a penalty on that. 
Yeah. He didn't pick him up. That'd no. be the only thing. Back to pass Ayala. Like, got to go deep. He's got Nixon no. overthrows him just barely down at the 15-yard line incomplete. It'll be a third down and 10. He had beaten the defensive back deep. Yeah. No, that might be the fastest I've seen Nixon move. Yeah. Just off the fingertips at the 15-yard line. So third down and 10, Tigers at the 49. They converted the third and fourth to 31 earlier on this drive, which began at their own 24-yard line to open the second half. Fox stopped at 7.48 to go in the third quarter, and Imperial leading at 6-0. to Nixon will come wide out to the left. Wilson will go in the slot left. And now Robles will also come wide out to the left. Step away from the line of scrimmage to get four in the backfield. Ayala back to pass. Under some rush, going to throw it way he out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, he was smart. yeah, he got a lot of rush coming up. What's the number on the rush? 50 it was 54, I thought it was 54. It is 54. I don't think he got touched. No, huh? No, he, he got around the side on that. And that was really the smart thing to do for Ayala. Got to give credit to Michael Saldana on that one. And it will go incomplete. Fourth down and 10, the Tigers will have to punt. Robles will come on to do it. And Robles is number one in the state of California, believe it or not. <laughs> in the whole state, 47.4 yards per punt. Wow. Last two kickers we've had have been phenomenal. And that also puts him number 12 in the country. I put a kicker. Uh-oh. Who said, but I think it might have got touched. I think it might have got blocked a little bit. And we'll angle out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. We'll see the referees where they will get a marked out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're going to bring it out to about the 35-yard line. We should so, just yeah. try for a first down. So first and 10, Valley Center, it's their own 35-yard line. Trailing the Tigers just 6 to nothing with 7.35 to go in the third quarter play. There's a net of 14 yards on the punt. Mm. And that, it kind of looked like it might have got partially blocked. It might have to way pull to way, the right yeah, part. Pull straight to the right. Under center is Mitchell at quarterback. Brings Garcia in from, and a little reverse handoff into him. Inside handoff, and he'll punch his way out to about the 41-yard line. He's the one who's been able to move the ball against the Tigers, and they're going to have to come up with some of these big kids. Yeah, Lopez had him right at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to get away from him. Gain of six on that, a fourth down, or second down and four from the 41. He's carried the ball only two times, but it's been for 14 yards. And he came into the game averaging 7.9 per carry. A big back finally brought him down. Back into the shotgun formation now. Jet Puentes Staley behind him. Back to pass. Going to throw it out into the flag. Going to complete the pass behind the line of scrimmage. Will turn and get hit at about the... Really close to the first down. He may have gotten the first down. Yeah, it's going to go uh, completed to Jesse Morales. And that's his first catch of the night. Actually, good coverage by the Tiger defense on that. There's three Tigers there, but he's able to fight for the first down. Out to the 47-yard line, and a gain of six on the first down. That gives 38 yards in passing to Valley Center in the ballgame. And now going back under center is Mitchell. Two wide receivers to each side. Now Garcia will come in motion. Get that inside handoff again. Tigers don't jump offside on a hard count. Hand it off to Wentz oh. Staley, and he gets around the corner. He has speed into the Tiger territory. Penalty flag goes down. I think we're going to have a block in the back or a hold, maybe, against Valley Center. So I think it's going to be brought back. But a good run by Puentes Staley to get a first down, but they're going to bring that one back, I believe. Something obvious there. It was three, three flags right there, same spot. Hold or a block in the back or something like that. Oh, right. I see. Mincher was so close to catching him from behind. Let's see what hold. Yeah, yep, sure hold against Valley Center. It'll be marched from the point of the infraction, which will be the 49-yard line, so we'll bring it back to the 39. And uh, we'll credit two-yard gain for Staley. So yeah. they're going to still keep it as first down, but the penalty... Yes. Yeah. Against Valley Center on a hold. And it brings it back to the 39 yard line. High snap. High snap. snap. And the Tigers are going to get to Mitchell, and he'll be sacked, brought down on a very high snap that he had to jump up for. 
inside the 35-yard line to about the 33. So it's going to be a loss of six on that one. Yeah, that was a dangerous one. That just about went over his head yeah. completely. He stopped it. He was able to tip it, slow it down. Could not find the handle. And we Tigers had a chance at it, but Bencher finally brought him down. So second down at about 25 from the 33. Under center again, it's going to be, no, Mitchell will be Ooh, back to the shot. shotgun if the penalty flag goes down. Going the wrong way. So a five-yard penalty against Valley Center on the false start. I'll make it a second down and 30 from the 28. Oh, Kurt says, not confirmed, but could be Brawley 13, Bishop 7 at F. Wow. There you go for the Wildcats. Yeah. Bouncing back after a tough loss to Oof. Central last week in the Bell game. Unbelievable. 14-7 ball game. Yeah. And Brawley bouncing back. So second down and 30 from the 28 for Valley Center. A goal from the shotgun again. Mitchell, a quarterback, goes back to pass. Sets up in the pocket. No rush. Gets a pass Ooh. out. Going to complete in a nice little fly pattern along the far sideline and getting all the way out to the 50-yard line with the catch. That was a pretty, pretty little pass right there, right between two defenders. And it's going to be completed to Jesse Morales once again. He's got two catches here in the second half. It's going to make it a third down, very manageable, seven from the 50-yard line. That's going to be a gain of 22 on that one. Gives him 60 yards of passing in the game. You know who's not in there? Ethan. That's who's missing. So third down and about seven from the 50. Back to pass. No rush again. Going to complete the pass over the middle for a first down. And it's going to be... Maybe Morales again. Seven. Number six, isn't it? Yeah, number... Oh, it is seven. It is yep. Garcia. Okay. So that's his second catch of the night. And it'll go for a first down to the Tiger 35-yard line. 15-yarder on that one. If you accomplish, brought him down, but not till after the first down. I do not see Ethan up on the sideline either. First and 10 Valley Center on the prowl at the Tiger 35 yard line. Mitchell still in the shotgun. Taking his time. High snap. Goes out to his right. Then he's going to throw deep on the far sideline and tipped away by Eddie Martinez. Pass was intended for Ely Contreras. Will fall incomplete, and it'll be a second down and ten. Good job, ready to come over oh, there. Yeah, the yeah, almost jumped a little early. Giving some height up is yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah, Contreras is six three and one ninety. Oh. So, yeah, he's giving up some, some space there in the air. So second down and ten from the thirty five of the Tigers. Still trying to spot. Ethan on the sideline. I do not see him. Let me yell, yell at his dad. Second down and 10. Garcia moves over into motion to the right oh, side and stops. Handout's going to go up the middle. It's hit at the line of scrimmage, but will get positive yardage. And it's going to be Daniel Staley this time. And he'll get to the Tiger 33 yard line. So a gain of a couple. Third down and eight from the 33. Great job by Max. Alvarez, to bring him down. Big Max, I didn't know he was only a junior. So he was playing varsity as a sophomore last year. And he did a great job for the Tigers. So third down and eight from the 33 for Valley Center. They have not tried a field goal this year, so you're looking at four down territory here. I thought they missed a couple again. They they haven't made one, I should have said that one. Pass is going to be incomplete along the near side. And I've thrown a little bit out of bounds, but a lot of pressure put on him. J.J. Minnis yeah. back there will put the pressure on. Fourth down and eight from the 33. So the Tiger defense needs to step up big one more time on yeah. this drive. See Ethan's down on the ground here stretching out. Mm, yep. In front of the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't called his number much. No, no. He had nothing in. I don't think the second half. So Ethan Reeves, who undoubtedly be a first-time all-IVL at linebacker. Yeah, he's. Remember, he came up limp 
after he got the touchdown last week. Remember, he was limping after the game we saw him. Yeah. And I think that's what is still affecting him tonight. So fourth down and eight for Valley Center from the Tiger 33. Man goes in motion to the near side. Oh, Morales, they move. And, and the penalty flags are going to go down. False start. Two 50. people moving at the same time. Or was it 50 jump? Or are they going to say timeout? Oh, yeah. Timeout is going to okay. be called by Valley Center with 238 to go in this third quarter play. It's the Tigers 6 and the Valley Center Jaguars 0. Start that day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, full, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending players to special training. Through their fundraising efforts, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They are always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317. If you're interested in helping out, go Tigers. So after a timeout, called by first-year head coach Tom Dunkel, Valley Center facing a fourth down and eight from the Tiger 33-yard line. Mitchell in the shotgun. Hard count. Gets a good snap. Back pass. Throws out to the near side. Has a receiver. He's off the hand of the intended receiver, Kevin Garcia. May have been out of bounds if he had caught it anyway. But the Tiger defense bends but doesn't break and will take over possession first and ten at their own 33-yard line. Yeah, he turned up and they threw it behind the back shoulder pass. But you're right. I think if he catches that, he's out of bounds anyway. Uh, yeah, I think his momentum would have carried him yeah. out of bounds on that. So a drive that started at the Valley Center 35 comes to a halt to the Tiger 33, and Imperial will take over possession, first and 10. Yeah, you hate seeing that with Ethan down there because you know he wants yeah. to play in the worst way. And uh, his, he's they're going to tape his ankle up. It looks like he's, yeah, he's pulled both of his shoes off and slammed into the turf. You just know he wants to be out there. First and ten for the Tigers from their own 33. Castro back into the backfield with quarterback Jay Nayella. It's the snap. Hand off to Castro. Castro will be hit at the line of scrimmage, but he'll drag the defenders for a couple of yards to the 35. It'll be a second down and eight. See number 11, Dustin Hoskins and 45, Michael Bray. Get their names out there in case somebody's listening from... Valley Center. Pretty, pretty place, I'll tell you. One of my it favorite is. places yeah, is really for all games. So second down and eight for the Tigers from the 38. And Dodeme goes in to get the flat pattern out on the far side. Gets hit oh. just shy of the first down, but oh. he'll get about a yard short at the 42 as he went into motion to the far side and then a little wheel pass out to him. That'll be a third down and one for the Tigers. And the ball placed at the 42-yard line of Valley Center. A seven-yard gain. A wheel route, kind of like that. Yeah, it was. I like it was Jet Fuentes, or Fuentes, Staley. Mm -hmm. Hit him and stopped him. I couldn't believe him. He's not very big himself. He is a good ball player. Yeah. Third down and one for the Tigers. Ayala in the shotgun. Hands it off to Castro. Castro gets hit behind Ooh. the line of scrimmage. He's not going to make it. Well, they're he's going to get close. close. He got a little further than I thought he did. But they're, if they bring the change, that just kind of looks like he's going to be a little bit short. Ayala still limping, coming toward the sideline to get his play. And they're going to bring the change out. So referee John Seaman will call time out to bring the chains out to stretch them out to see. They're going to be at about the 43-yard line, so it's going to be really, really close. We Elder was saying of this drive that Valley Center had starting at their 35, I do believe that was their best field position of their drive in the game, and that is 
the best position they have, but it comes yep. up a little bit short. So good call on that. And he also says as the, as the Valley Center is passing short and expecting its good athletes to make big plays. And I think you're right, yep. Lee, on that. They just haven't been able to make enough of them. So the Tigers can come up a little bit. Oh, they're getting ready to bring them out now, but yeah. I don't know. It's going to be really close. Did, did, did you say, did you happen to see the NFL play where? They they set the ball which the nose was on the line like on the thirty five and the tag, they're going Tigers are gonna come up just a little bit short like about six inches short it looks like moving the players out of the way so they can stretch it out and it's gonna be just no it is, Ooh, gonna be it good is enough. For, oh, it does touch the oh it's fourth, that fourth. that short okay so fourth down and just inches for the Tigers no it was in the NFL and they put the ball where the nose was on the line which would give the opposing team a first down. And as they're getting ready to bring the chains up, then he moves the football back <laughs> about a half a yard, and they didn't get the first down. The Tigers, though, are going to go for it with fourth down and in inches from the 42-yard line. But why not review it then? Why would the coach not ask for a review of that? I, I don't know. I just saw that someone had mentioned it, and I thought, I'm going to oh, see that. Oh, look at that. Oh, hard count by the Tigers and jumping outside Valley Center. That will give the Tigers a first down. Hot kiss jumps offside. 37 seconds left in the third. Good job by Ayala. Yeah. And for the rest of the team to not move. I think but a hard count yeah. like that is going to be a five-yard penalty. That will give the Tigers a first and ten, and it will put the ball at the 48-yard line. He did get, go untouched into the backfield. Yeah, oh, he did, yeah. <laughs> Nobody touched him. Even the, the Tigers' interior line did not Nobody move any to, to uh, stop him at all. And so it was an easy call for the referees. First and ten, Imperial at the 48-yard line. You know, with Ayala limping like that, he had two touchdowns last week running. He's not going to do that tonight. Uh, oh, not, well, you don't have doesn't have the wheels on it tonight. Tigers will go with trips left this time. Roble is into the lineup. Wilson in the lineup, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Imperial Tigers six and the Valley Center Jaguars zero. Mmm, Johnny's Burritos. An Imperial Valley tradition since 1963. Three locations, Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Delicious burritos, including your favorite breakfast burritos, made just the way you like it. Tacos and taquitos, sandwiches, burgers, carne asada fries, and so much more. And don't forget their delicious Johnny's Sweet Tea. Johnny's Burritos in Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Hi, this is Jason Jackson, owner of Southwest Security. Two years ago, I opened Southwest Postal, offering you 24-hour access, 365 days a year. So if you're tired of dealing with the inconvenience of our post office hours and you would like to be able to get your mail when you want, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, in the middle of the night, then come visit us at Southwest Postal with 24-hour staff. Plus, we're also your local FedEx, DHL, and Postal Service Center. We even offer text message and email notification when you receive your mail. Southwest Postal at the corner of 4th and Hiles in El Centro. So first and ten, Tigers, and they'll now be going toward the north side of the field here at Shimamoto Simpson Stadium, formerly Tiger Stadium, and then a first and ten at their own 48-yard line heading toward the north, and no wind. I mean, the flag has not moved <laughs> all night long. There's just no breeze at all, so it should not affect the Tiger passing game at all. The only wind we've gotten is that smoke that's coming from the burgers or cooking it. over there, whatever it is. Back to pass. Ayala going to complete it to, to Robles, who throws deep on a pass. Going to complete it. It is a touchdown for the Tigers. Gio Robles on the pass from the flat will get it all the way down for the touchdown. And the Tigers now lead it 12 to 0. Wow, what a great pass. Wow. Jaden Wilson on the catch. Effort. Yeah, he just. He just. Like nothing. <laughs> yeah. It, his arm is just incredible. It really is. We were watching him before the Central game when he was warming up, and he just flicked his wrist, yeah, just, and it'd go 40 yards. Yeah. And on this one, in the air, I you're looking 40 to 45 yards on that, and Wilson will get that a 52-yard touchdown pass. The Tigers up by 12. Robles will come in for the extra point attempt, and the ball is down. The kick is up. It is good. He's now... On the season, 28 of 31, and the score with 11.50 to go in the ball game. It's the Tigers 13 and the Jaguars 0. 
Wake up with us at Broken Yolk Cafe. Open daily at 7 a.m. Serving you your favorite breakfast. From omelets, pancakes, how about eggs, Benedict, waffles, and yes, Mexican breakfast too. Broken Yolk Cafe also serves lunch till 2 p.m. From sandwiches, salads, and yes, of course, the all-American cheeseburgers. You can order online at Broken Yolk Cafe El Centro or call 760-352-9655. That's 352-9655. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! So pass from Ayala... Thrown out to the flat to Gio Robles, who nails it to Jason Wilson for a 52-yard touchdown pass, a four-play 67-yard drive. He's at 2.42 oh. off the clock, and the kick's going to go short. Hotchkiss is going to get it at the 32-yard line, goes upfield to the 35, and will be brought down at the 36-yard line. Yeah, not a long kick this time. I don't like it. Oh, that was Castro that hit him. Is it 36 yard line, is it? And for Robles, that's his first touchdown pass on the varsity. And he goes to Wilson for 52 yards. Did you see how he went behind the quarterback there? As soon as I see that, oh, yeah. I started looking for the And yeah. he, he was like 15 to 20 yards so beyond. Much. Nobody. Yeah, nobody they had him, and just like get the pass there and get the catch, and it's in. And I, it was just perfect. I thought he overthrew him. No, oh. but it was so high that it just got to right float there. out there. Yeah. yeah. The first and ten from the thirty-six. Little draw play up the middle to Puente Staley. He'll get out to about the thirty-nine yard line. Again, it's three. Second down and seven. Danny Esquivel brought him down, but Apotaka. I thought Apotaka had it for a loss. Was able to get away from him. What a call. That was a, that was a great, great call. And, great great. Call. and it, was, it was just perfect. You couldn't do it any better than that. You really couldn't. Ethan's got a bag of ice on his left ankle. Yeah. He wants yeah, upside to eat through his helmet, his shoes. And yeah, he, he just got a feel yeah. for him. He wants to be out there so badly. Senior. Yep. I'm the same. Second down. Maybe a gain of a couple or it's going to give him. It's going to hand off again to Puentes Daly. And he's going to get near the... 40-yard line. It'll be a third down now and about six from the 40. Good read by J.J. Jimenez. He's been held in check tonight. Yes, he has. 14 yards on six carries. Jeff went to Staley, and he'll be replaced in the backfield now as Daniel Staley, his cousin, comes in. A little bit bigger, and now under center, in that inside handoff, reverse kind of handoff, goes to Garcia, who will get out to about the 43-yard line. And it's going to be a three-yard game, but a fourth and three coming up, and the punt team comes out for Valley Center. I'll tell you, that's Apodaca and J.J., the last three plays. Just look back in this game. It's like the, the fourth, four and out. The Valley Center's hand and out. One, two, three. That's oh, four. short. And I was afraid they were going to save it. They do. Hotch just gets it. He's into Tiger territory. Down to the 30-yard line to the 25. And finally going to be brought down inside the 20-yard line at the 16. I was afraid they were going to do something like that. Oh, Some of these Tigers they, down. Call, and there's a Tiger down at the end of it. Stadium Wilson. As Hotchkiss will get down to the 16-yard line, it looks like. First and 10 for them at the Tiger 16. Never count this team out. Nope, 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 nope. It's going to be a 41-yard run by Hotchkiss. First time he's touched the ball on offense tonight. And uh, Tiger player down while they're checking on him. With 9.32 to go in the ball game, it's the Tigers 13 and the Jaguars 0. 
Did you know that about 1,000 students from around the Imperial Valley are getting a jump on their college careers by attending IBC classes right now on their own high school campus? Ask us about our dual enrollment programs, available to students at most Imperial Valley high schools. Get started now at the number one community college in the nation. Check us out. For information, go to imperial.edu and search dual enrollment. That's imperial.edu. Jade Wilson, who caught that long 52-yard touchdown pass just moments ago, is the injured player, and he's walking off under his own power, goes into a little bit of a trot, so don't think it's anything serious at this point. But uh, the Tigers' defense has to step up now after a fake punt goes 41 yards for the Tigers' 16 and a first and 10 for Valley Center. Mitchell goes back into the shotgun. It's the snap. Goes back to pass. Looks over to the near side into the end zone. Ooh. Oh, almost. I thought for a moment it might have got intercepted by Martinez, but it's tipped away and it goes incomplete. It'll be a second down and ten. That just took the ball. Just floated out there for so yeah. long. It looked like he reached out after this. I think Martinez touched that, but he almost reached almost, out. Yeah, almost got the one hander. Yeah, catch on it. So second down and ten from the sixteen. I guess we Stop. don't have any, anybody taller we can put on in the... Stop the clock with 9.20 to go in the game. Tigers holding on to a 13 to nothing lead over Valley Center. Mitchell taking his time, gets the snap. Going to hand it off up the middle. Hitting a little bit of yardage is Daniel Staley. He'll get down to... About the... 11-yard line, it looks like. So gain of five, second down and five. Or make it third down, I'm sorry, third down and five. Right up the middle. Right up the middle, that's yeah. Probably nothing, nothing fancy about that, that's for sure. So third down and five for Valley Center. Yeah, I'm thinking they're going four down territory is what I'm figuring again. So the Tiger defense has to step up big one more time. Hotchkiss. Comes in as a blocking back, handed off to Staley again up the middle. He gets hit the line of scrimmage, but he gets a big old head of steam when he, he gets going on that. that. And he got down to about the nine-yard line. That'll be a gain of a couple, so a fourth down and three coming up for Valley Center. Yeah, that first game here, he, he hit the full start. He's at full speed. Yeah. You know, when he's at the hole, he's full speed. I remember us talking about that. He's like the trolley runner. They run downhill. Yep. Six foot, 180, just a junior, too. He and Puentes say they're both just juniors. And both very good ball players for this Sally Center team. Carol Crowd getting into it now on a fourth down and three from the nine-yard line. We all have Daniel Staley again in the backfield. Timeout and the Tigers. Tigers will call timeout. 7.55 to go in the ball game, And it's Imperial 13 and Valley Center zero. Hey, Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial is serving the best Japanese cuisine in the Imperial Valley. K Sushi offers you 50 different sushi rolls, plus beer, wine, and sake. And they also have teriyaki chicken or beef, rice and noodles. K Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial. They're open daily from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. K Sushi also caters and welcomes big groups anytime. Call 760-355-4440. That's 355-4444. Your takeout. Stan's Auto Body has been serving customers in the Imperial Valley for many years now. Their mission is to be recognized as a premier provider of auto body repair services. Stan's Auto Body also works closely with you and your insurance company on your collision repair. They're committed to delivering superior quality and customer service by exceeding your expectations. Stan's Auto Body thanks you for making them number one with CarWise.com. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. Fourth and three at the nine for Valley Center. Under center is Mitchell. Hotchkiss comes in next to him. Oh, and the Tigers jump outside. Jumped. Tigers no. jump. I don't know that he went outside. So is it? I, I had the binoculars did. on it. I saw a Tiger move, but no, you're no, right, George. He, no, he moved, but he didn't, start. he didn't go into the. Okay, so it's a false start. Yeah. I was looking at one part of the binoculars and it happened outside my vision. So the five-yard penalty will move it back to now a fourth down and eight and move it back to the 14-yard line. Yeah, the right tackle moved. But we did. We jumped. We flinched, but we didn't. 
across the line or encroach. Uh, but if we did, it was after they moved to start with. So fourth down and eight from the 14. Uh, just for Daniel Signy will stay in the backfield, and they'll go from the shotgun. He'll be on the left side of Mitchell. Mitchell will get the snap, goes back to pass. Pump fakes, rolls out to his right, under pressure, throws into the end zone. Oh, he got caught. It. Touchdown, Valley Center. It. it was zipped and then caught in the end zone for the touchdown. And oh. uh, Lincoln Zetmeyer is going to make the catch. And that is his first touchdown reception of the season, and it's now a 13-6 to game. Oh, Bull tried to catch that instead of knocking it down. Yep, oh, you got to just knock it down. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But there were a lot of guys in that area, yeah. and so... And it bounced right yeah. to him. Yep. 14-yard touchdown on that. Coming in to attempt the extra point. And it's not normally their kicker on that. Well, I'm not sure who this the is. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it looks to be good. It good. is. With 7.46 remaining in the ball game, it is now Imperial 13, Valley Center 7. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial is 100% authentic Mexican cuisine. Their extensive menu features traditional handmade Mexican dishes with nothing but fresh ingredients. El Zarape Restaurant has taken it over the top with their creative ideas like stuffed special quesadillas with carne asada, shrimp, or pollo asada. There are 17 different burritos. El Zarape Restaurant, 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Or call in your order at 760-355-4435. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eight plays, 64-yard drive using a 354 off the clock. And the touchdown pass from... Braylon Mitchell, his 11th of the year, will go to Lincoln Zetmeyer's first touchdown reception of the year. And that makes the score now 13-7. to He cannot rest against nope. those teams. You cannot. Oh, 7.46. A lot of time to go in the ballgame in this first, fourth quarter. We've always mentioned how well coached this team has always been. Yep. Very disciplined. And on that drive, that fake punt that Hotchkiss took 41 yards and then it tipped the ball off the end zone on a fourth down and eight. I was going to be caught at about the 15-yard line. His bow's in. He'll get out and twist his way out across the 30-yard line or near the 30-yard line. They're going to say just short of 29. So first and 10 Tigers from their own 29. I'm going to get a little offense and run off the clock time. Yeah, that, that series right there, we sure could have used Ethan. Mm-hmm. Put pressure oh, on that oh, quarterback. Yeah. No question. Because he's always in the back there. Yep. I'll see him have it. You could just see him on the sideline, that ice on his left ankle, and you could just see how much he wants to be out there yeah. and can't. And, and as you pointed out, he is a senior. This is his last home game. And, and what a stellar career he's had. Mm. I sure enjoyed watching him. Yep, I have too. So first and ten, Tigers. They'll bring him in as back in in the backfield along with Ayala at quarterback from the shotgun. Wide receivers to each side of the field. Hand it off to Jimenez up the middle. Get a little bit of yardage out across the 30-yard line. It's about the 32, maybe 33, about the 32. Looks like gain of three, second down and seven. Still teach. You're saying, still is saying, you guys are talking about cutting us out. I'm thinking about making the drive out there. That's the truth, though. Uh, so, again, a three on that. Second down and seven from the 32. He managed with 13 yards on six carries. Both defense has really been tough against the run. Once you can take that 41 yards from Hotchkiss on the fake punt. Uh, that one hurt. Yeah, that one hurt. That one hurt. Second down and seven for the Tigers from their own 32. Fake the handoff, going to throw it out on the near side. Got to complete it for a first down to Gaxiola out to the 45-yard line, first and 10 Tigers. How pretty was that? Oh, right in line with us, too. The market at the 41, so it'll be a gain of nine, nine yards in the play in the first down. I right, like that. Right on the outside shoulder. Make it, make it the 46. I'm sorry, the 46-yard line. So it's going to be a 14-yard gain. But, yeah, great, great job. Great execution on that. Everything. Everything's perfect right there. Well, we got Central 
14, Eastlake 7 in the third. So new set of downs for the Tigers, first and 10 from their own 46. Ayala handed off, bumps into Jimenez, and it gets him, actually gets him outside the tackle, and he'll get into Valley Center territory to the 48-yard line, and it'll be a second down and about four. I like the way he's hopping around out there. Two hands on the ball, though. He had that ball wrapped up. His keep, longest carry of the night. Got to keep doing that. Right there. Same yep. thing. Yep. So a second down and four from the 48. Clock now still running at 540 to go in the ball game. Tigers leading at 13 to 7. Two field goals and a touchdown for the Tigers. Both touchdowns have been by way of air, for that matter. Ayala will have a few minutes to his left side now in the shotgun. And we'll hand it off to J.J. again over left tackle. And he'll get out to close to the 46-yard line. That'll be a gain of a couple, but the Tigers looking at third down and two from the Valley Center 46. I thought he was already down. Uh, it was a blocker. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, was, there was extra punch in him on that. The third and two, boy, y'all just cannot move on his feet. No. That might be good for us, though. Team, team is beat up a little bit. Yeah. But when he handed it off on the previous play, they bumped into each other, but kind of pushed J.J. Out, outside of the tackle and is able to help him get some yardage. Inadvertently. Yeah. You know, Nixon would go yeah. Nixon, of the night. <laughs> Nixon would go wide left and Gaxiola wide right. Ayala. Mm. Low snap. Gets to Jimenez. Gets the first down. Still on his feet inside the forty to about the thirty eight, maybe thirty seven yard line. Let's see that it looks like forward progress to the thirty eight. A gain of eight and a first down for the Tigers. Big first down. Great. Great vision by uh Jimenez. And keeping those second efforts going, too. Yeah. Oh, you know, he's always running hard. Mm-hmm. Yep. Always running hard. 29, 29 yards and nine carries now. Oh, good. So you get a little bit of yards soon. 44 yards rushing for Castro. Tigers creeping up to 100 yards rushing on a very stingy Valley Center defense. Only giving up one touchdown to the Tigers tonight. Ayala on the shotgun taking his time. Four minutes to go in the game. Hands off few minutes again over the left side. He minutes. Good second effort again to get inside the 35-yard line. Diving forward to about the 32, it looks like. 33, about the 33-yard line. Yep. So it'll be a gain of five, second down and five. Oh, with 3.43 to go. And moving. That's that clock run. Oh, yes. I love it. Minutes will stay in the lineup. Looking fresh back there, really. You know, you see him walking around back there. It's like he's itching to get the ball again. <laughs> Second down and five from the 33 of Valley Center. Ayala taking his time. It's the snap. And Zoffy Minutes up the middle. Gets hit by oh, the line stop. of scrimmage. No gain at all on that Eleven. one. No gain. Third down and five from the 33. Hot kiss again. Good ball player. He's a ball player. Six foot one seventy junior. Three third down to five from the thirty three of Valley Center. Clock down under three minutes now, two fifty and rolling. Tigers holding on to a thirteen to seven advantage. Winner goes to Fallbrook next Friday night, the number two seed in division three. From the third and five, Gaxiola wide out to the right. Jaden Wilson back in the lineup, and he's wide left, and the Tigers are going to call timeout. With two thirty three to go in the ball game, and it's Imperial thirteen. And Valley Center, seven. Roto-Rooter, your plumbing and drain cleaning specialist. Roto-Rooter offers full services from hydrojetting to camera inspection, water heaters, faucets, garbage disposal, anything that's clogged up. They'll take care of the problem right. Roto-Rooter is a locally owned family business with 60 years in the Imperial Valley. Call the experts at 760-352-6789 or 344-2533 on the north end. Roto-Rooter, when drains don't work, we do. Start that day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, full, fresh flavor. The Valley's premier deli. 
serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. We have a third uh, IHS 1977 graduate listening. Kathy yes. Johnson has checked in from Alpine. That's just kind of chilly up there, too, I'd say. Third down and five for the Tigers from the 33-yard line of Valley Center. Jimenez stays in the backfield along with Ayala. Goes to the right side of Ayala now in the shotgun. Gets the snap. Fake the handoff. Back to pass Ayala. Going to look out in the flat. Has a receiver in Robles, and he catches it. At the 14-yard line, first and 10, Tigers at the 14. Giovanni Robles. <laughs> did he cobble that? It looked like it he did a little bit. Catch. Caught over his shoulder. Yeah. Tough catch to make. And the really? sophomore, six foot five sophomore, makes a tremendous catch. And it gets down to the 14-yard line and a first down for the Tigers. It's going to run at the 15-yard line, so it's going to be an 18-yard game. Timeout on the field. 2.20 to go in the ball game. Imperial 13, Valley Center 7. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending players to special training. Through their fundraising efforts, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They are always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317. If you're interested in helping out, go Tigers! Mmm, Johnny's Burritos. An Imperial Valley tradition since 1963. Three locations, Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Delicious burritos, including your favorite breakfast burritos, made just the way you like it. Tacos and taquitos, sandwiches, burgers, carne asada fries, and so much more. And don't forget, they're delicious Johnny's Sweet Tea. Johnny's Burritos in Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Updated score, Sweetwater leading Southwest now 34-20 to in the fourth quarter. It's Central 14, Eastlake 7 in the third quarter. Vincent Memorial leading Valhalla now 35-7 to in the mm. third. It's Tri-City Christian 28, Calipatria 0 in the third quarter. Escondido leading Calexico 27-13 in the third quarter. Handout's going to go to Jimenez over the left side. As you were saying, two hands on the ball, puts his head down, will get good yardage, about four yards. They're not tackling. They're not putting them on the ground the last two no, times. No. I'm going back to Gio Robles. He, oh, he's just so smooth. I, I've seen some good ball players. Quick, George Smith. Yep. Comes to mind with Ramirez. Well, he also... He, but he's so smooth. Well, and the thing with it is how much the Tigers have missed him this year. Yeah. He had five catches for 66 yards against West Hills in the first game and nothing since until now. And tonight he's had some big catches through a touchdown pass on an option. And off he met us up the middle again. Kind of stutters a little yeah. bit at the start, but we'll get a couple of yards out of it. And it'll be a third down and four. And a timeout's going to be called by Valley Center. Minute 29 to go in the ball game. Tigers, 13. Valley Center, 7. Hi, this is Jason Jackson, owner of Southwest Security. Two years ago, I opened Southwest Postal, offering you 24-hour access 365 days a year. So if you're tired of dealing with the inconvenience of our post office hours and you would like to be able to get your mail when you want, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, in the middle of the night, then come visit us at Southwest Postal with 24-hour staff. Plus, we're also your local FedEx, DHL, and Postal Service Center. We even offer text message and email notification when you receive your mail. Southwest Postal at the corner of Fort and Hiles in El Centro. Wake up with us at Broken Yolk Cafe. Open daily at 7 a.m., serving you your favorite breakfast. From omelets, pancakes, how about eggs, benedict, waffles, and yes, Mexican breakfast, too. Broken Yolk Cafe also serves lunch till 2 p.m. From sandwiches, salads, and yes, of course, the all-American cheeseburgers. You can order online at Broken Yolk Cafe El Centro or call 760-352-9655. That's 352-9655. You know, George, we pointed out earlier that we've kept the ball on the right hash mark, too. If we do get a field goal, that's a two-possession game lead. So oh, okay. we'd like to get a touchdown here, but if not, it's a chip shot for Robles. Ball's on the right hash mark. And after he minutes up the middle again, he'll stay on that right side. He's going to run into the, just a wall there, and it will get to about a yard to the seven, but a fourth down and two at the seven, and Robles will come in to try to put the mice on this game. And the clock's still moving. So right. Clock down to 110 to go and still rolling. 
I don't know if they used up all their time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't keep track of that. So I'm not sure. And they, the way it's rolling, it must have no timeouts. Left. But they might have one. I think they have two there. Do they? Okay, they got two timeouts. So the Tigers will take their time. And I would think we'd go for a field goal. That put us up by nine. That's two possession. And may take a delay of game right here, in fact. No, nope, nope. the Tigers are going to call their last timeout just before. Yeah, he's starting to right. So good, good job by David Shaw on that. 43.9 seconds to go in the ball game. The Tigers leading Valley Center 13-7. to seven. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! We're going to keep this at the game so we don't miss what happens now. With 43 seconds to go in the game, Tigers up 13-7 to over Valley Center. And uh, I suspect we will see a field goal, although... Well, this is on... Uh, no, that's 12, not 11. Don't say that. Uh, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I would think he'd go in there and do it just a chip shot. Already not yeah. much more than an extra point. Yeah, Felix is in there. And so Long snap you know, all the snaps have been terrific tonight, yeah. too, by the way on the field goals, and this would be a third field goal if he's able to get it, and the ball will be placed down at the 14-yard line. So this is going to be a 24-yard field goal of attempt. This could pretty well ice it for the Tigers if he makes it. He has made 10 of 12 on the season. Ayala on the hold, left foot a kicker, and Valley Center jumped off side. Nope. I guess they didn't go across the line. I thought they did. And maybe the Tigers are trying to draw them. They're not fishing at it. And Imperial will use or take the delay if they have any timeouts left. I thought it sure looked like they No, they did. They did. It sure looked like it, didn't it? The, le- the left right. side of their defensive line. So they're they're going to move this back and now it's going to be a 29-yard attempt. I think, I think the angle won't be as great either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the angles. It'll be a better angle for him. Yeah, it's a better angle this way. And there's been several times this year that we have said this is his biggest field goal. (laughs) (laughs) The last time, if you remember, Tigers went into overtime and kicked field goal one. And he kicked three field goals in that game. And he's trying to kick his third now, a 29-yard attempt. Both games. Yep. Both games, he's been the man. Right. He's been the difference. And we'll try to do it one more time now. From the 19-yard line, so a 29-yard attempt for Joel Robles. Ball is down. The kick is up, and it is good. It is good. Yes. So the field goal was good, and the Tigers are up 16-7 to with 39.9 seconds to go on the third field goal of the night for Joel Robles and his 11th. Of the season. <laughs> wow. I love it. Look at <laughs> they are in the I crowd. The team is going and, and mobbing over him. And what a great job. You know, it's his last time at home, yeah. a senior, and to come up and, and play so well tonight and the first time the Tigers met against Valley Center and to kick three field goals in each of those games <laughs> to seal them. I, I don't know whether they can score twice in 39 no, not seconds. In 39. But yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, I'd love to see my grandson, Stephen, be so animated out there. Eleven plays on that drive for the it's Tigers. Good. Well, it looks like we're going to Fallbrook, Nick. Eh? I think it's Fallbrook next Friday. Yep. They're the I number did. two seed. I was torn. This is uh, Seth's last game in the boys at Adam State. Oh. It's next weekend, so we're going to take off Thursday. Okay. Now we're going to Fallbrook. going to be a pooch kick. Oh, they didn't let it go out of bounds, or did they? It did go out of bounds, hey, so they'll get it at the 35-yard line. So Valley Center will have the ball first and 10 at their own 35 as the ball was pooch kicked out of bounds. Or they're going to call the five-yard penalty, then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, they're going to so kick off from the 35. All right. Well, okay. 
Uh, let's see, 21 and 43. It's going to be a 64-yard drive. Oh, put it right in that hole there in the middle. Take it really, really high. Yeah. Get some coverage to be able to be right down to it so they won't be able to move at all as soon as it's caught. And it is kicked up pretty high, and it's going to be caught at the 27-yard line. Out to the middle of the field, and the Tigers are going to bring him down. He's going to use a lot of yard, a lot of time up, and he'll want to get to the 32-yard line. And penalty flags go down after the play, and I'm not sure it's going to go against Imperial or Valley Center. We'll see. I'm sure, hoping it's going against Valley Center because that was good coverage to get the ball to the 32-yard line. So what happened? Was there oh way over there, here? Yeah, there were two players. Oh, they were going getting at it. Up. Yeah, getting inside. Don't want to give them any opportunities. Nope, nope, nope. Let's see which way this goes. All right, let's see. We that time. Boy, we used up a lot of clock. Oh, two. Did we ever. Unsportsman. Uh, number yeah. two. Field number yeah, two. That's what I was afraid of. That's what I was afraid of going against the Tigers. So instead of them having the ball to 32, it's going to bring out close to midfield. So seven minutes and seven seconds was taken off the clock on that. On that drive okay. for the Tigers. So now they have the ball at the 49-yard line with 33.2 seconds remaining on the clock, and the Tigers leading it 16-7. to It's a two-possession game, so they would have to score twice in that 33 seconds. This is where we miss Ethan, right here. Yep, yep, you're right. He is so strong. Back to pass. Throws it over the middle. Uh -oh. Has a receiver going to complete it at the 30-yard line. Still on his feet inside the 20, inside the 15. And quickly getting up, Jesse Morales on the catch. Well, they stopped the clock to set the chain. All right. And that will get it down to the 15-yard line. And this timeout, that's the last timeout now for Valley Center with 21.9 seconds remaining. And the no, score. No, no, he had no timeout. Oh, he wasn't. Okay. No, he spiked it. Okay. All right. Now, they were waiting for the change. So it'll be a second down then and 10 from the 15. Yeah, they had all the DBs and safeties back, and they still completed that. That was a 36-yarder, by the way. And, man, man, what a nice pass and catch, too. Got him on the run. Back to pass to Mitchell. Looks left. Looks right. Throws down the middle. Has a receiver. He tipped Ooh. away. It was intended for Garcia, but there are four Tigers there to tip that away. Stops the clock with 16 seconds remaining. It'll be a third down and 10 at the 15. Now that was over his head, and one of the Tigers that was behind him tipped it forward instead of letting it go over his head. I almost put it back in play. So third down and 10 for Valley Center with 16.6 seconds on the clock. So you got this big old kid against uh, little Eddie Martinez. Yep, it? yep. Six foot three receiver. Yep. Eli Contreras. Back to pass again. Looks over into the corner of the end zone. Has a receiver incomplete. Goes off the hands of Garcia, who was very well covered. And I think that would have been out of bounds again yep. had he caught it. So it'll be a fourth down. The ball game comes down to one player. Great coverage by both in. Maybe go over him. So fourth down and ten for Valley Center. You'll hear the crowd, and that will tell you one way or the other on this play. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear an eruption, you know it was incomplete. The Tigers win it. But still, realistically, with ten seconds, they have to score twice, twice. not just once. But Valley Center never say die. We've seen that too many years, too many times over the years. Here it is, fourth and ten from the fifteen yard line of the Tigers. Back to pass, Mitchell sets up, throws in the corner of the end zone. As a receiver, the tall guy's going to catch it. it. He's going to catch it. It's going to go to Contreras, and it's just the height advantage yeah. on that. And it stops the clock with five seconds to go. Kick an onside kick. It'll yeah. come down to that. Why didn't they do that earlier? He's got a foot on Eddie. Oh, he's 6'3 and 190, yeah. no question. So it'll be a 15-yarder. Makes it a 16-13 game. So they'll go for the extra one. So 
So extra point attempt coming up. But it's good. And it's good. So 5.3 seconds remaining in the ball game. And the score now, Imperial 16 and Valley Center 13. Make it 14. Okay, Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial is serving the best Japanese cuisine in the Imperial Valley. K-Sushi offers you 50 different sushi rolls, plus beer, wine, and sake. And they also have teriyaki chicken or beef, rice and noodles. K-Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial. They're open daily from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. K-Sushi also caters and welcomes big groups anytime. Call 760-355-4440. That's 355-4444. Your takeout. Stan's Auto Body has been serving customers in the Imperial Valley for many years now. Their mission is to be recognized as a premier provider of auto body repair services. Stan's Auto Body also works closely with you and your insurance company on your collision repair. They're committed to delivering superior quality and customer service by exceeding your expectations. Stan's Auto Body thanks you for making them number one with CarWise.com. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. So it comes to an onside kick. The Tigers have put all their hands on deck up front. And if the Tigers can recover this, that will just seal it. In fact, Gio Robles is one along the front. And they've got Jared Nixon along the front. J.J. Jimenez along the front. They've got a lot of hands people up there. And it's going to be a little pooch kick. And the Tigers are going to catch it. And that'll be it. Take a knee, and the Tigers are going to win this. We're going to march on to Fallbrook next Friday night as Joel Diacampos makes a good catch at the 46-yard line. And the Tigers will just need to take a knee, and that will be it. And that last drive, it was just a six-play drive, but Valley Center will go 68 yards on that and did it in 30 seconds. They didn't give up, that's for sure. Nope. Nope, they're not a giving up team, that's for sure. So we'll recap scoring for you in just a moment. Take a knee and the Tigers will take a knee and that'll be it. Final score, the Imperial Tigers 16, the Valley Center Jaguars 14. And the girl will go on to the second round of CIF at Fallbrook, the number two seed next Friday night. Two games against Valley Center, total of five points difference. You'll go first uh-huh. time in two years. Wow. We'll even? recap the scoring and the stats for you in just a moment. El Zarape Restaurant in Imperial is 100% authentic Mexican cuisine. Their extensive menu features traditional handmade Mexican dishes with nothing but fresh ingredients. El Zarape Restaurant has taken it over the top with their creative ideas like stuffed special quesadillas with carne asada, shrimp, or pollo asada. There are 17 different burritos. El Zarape Restaurant, 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Or call in your order at 760-355-4435. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Roto-Rooter, your plumbing and drain cleaning specialist. Roto-Rooter offers full services from hydro jetting to camera inspection, water heaters, faucets, garbage disposal, anything that's clogged up. They'll take care of the problem right. Roto-Rooter is a locally owned family business with 60 years in the Imperial Valley. Call the experts at 760-352-6789 or 344-2533 on the north end. Roto-Rooter, when drains don't work, we do. Start the day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee. Next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best tea in the valley with different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, full, fresh flavors. The Valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. Final score here in Imperial. The Imperial Tigers defeat the Valley Center Jaguars for the second time this year and the third time in a row. Final score is 16-14 to 14 as both teams gather in the middle of the field to pray after the game. I love seeing that each oh, and every I game. I love to see really pictures of how animated he is. Yep. And when you've got both teams there, yeah. not just the Imperial kids, but the Valley Center kids are out there, and they're all interspersed with each other. It's not like one on one side and one on the other. Yeah. And it's nice to see them. No, I go faster. I'm interested. I would love to hear what you're saying. Yeah, because <laughs> like you said, he's very animated in, in what he's saying to the young men out there. 
and it's just really cool to see. So I'm going to take a picture and send that to Jonathan. So he'll, I'm sure he'll enjoy that. The Tigers in the ball game would have a six to nothing lead at the half on two field goals by Joe Robles, 41 yards and 29 yards, and so Tigers were holding on to a slim six to nothing lead in uh, at halftime, going in at halftime, and then they would add though in the second half at the 11:50 mark of the. I think it's going to be further than that. Let me see what the time was. I'll look on my other stats here to see that because we both got kind of excited when we saw, oh, it was 1140, the fourth quarter. Okay. Put this in the fourth quarter. Oh, the pass? And that was the pass. Oh, yeah, okay. there was an option pass that went from Jaden Ayala, passed out on the flat to Gio Robos, and then launched a long one to Jaden Wilson and went for 52 yards on a touchdown. And the Tigers had a 13 to nothing lead after a four-play 67-yard drive took two minutes and 42 seconds. But after that 13 nothing lead, then uh, or 13-7 lead, I should say, because the uh, in the fourth quarter, was 7:46 to go in the fourth quarter, became a 13-7 lead on an eight-play, 64-yard drive by the Jaguars right. and a 14-yard touchdown pass from Braylon Mitchell that went to Lincoln Zetmeyer. And uh, on that eight-play, 64 yards using 354, it was a 13-7 game with 7:46 to go in the ball game. But then, uh, again, Joel Robles comes in with his third field goal of the night with 39 seconds to go on 11 play, 64-yard drive, and a key used up seven minutes and seven seconds by the Tigers on that. Just about eclipsed the, the, what was left on the clock. That 29-yard field goal, his third of the night, and that gave the Tigers a 16-7 to lead. And then just moments before the end of the game, five seconds to go, in fact, a six-play, 68-yard drive, uh, using just 30 seconds off the clock and a 15-yard touchdown pass from Brendan Mitchell. And this would go to Ely Contreras, his only catch of the night. In fact, the two touchdowns the Valley Center had, their receivers, that was their only catch of the night, and both of them their first touchdown receptions no of the year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's what they had. Tall kid right now, that's his first touchdown. That's, yep, it is. It is. Wow. I would have used. I don't him. remember him being on the team the first time we saw them, and I'm kind of wondering if he came with may have been injured and didn't play and came on. But uh, so the Tigers will end up winning this ball game by a final score of 16 to 14, and we'll take a look at the individual stats in just a moment. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending players to special training. Through their fundraising efforts, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They are always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! Mmm, Johnny's Burritos. An Imperial Valley tradition since 1963. Three locations, Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Delicious burritos, including your favorite breakfast burritos, made just the way you like it. Tacos and taquitos, sandwiches, burgers, carne asada fries, and so much more. And don't forget, they're delicious Johnny's Sweet Tea. Johnny's Burritos in Raleigh, Imperial, and El Centro. Hi, this is Jason Jackson, owner of Southwest Security. Two years ago, I opened Southwest Postal, offering you 24-hour access 365 days a year. So if you're tired of dealing with the inconvenience of our post office hours and you would like to be able to get your mail when you want, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, in the middle of the night, then come visit us at Southwest Postal with 24-hour staff. Plus, we're also your local FedEx, DHL, and Postal Service Center. We even offer text message and email notification when you receive your mail. Southwest Postal at the corner of 4th and Hiles in El Centro. Wake up with us at Broken Yoke Cafe. Open daily at 7 a.m., serving you your favorite breakfast. From omelets, pancakes, how about eggs, Benedict, waffles, and yes, Mexican breakfast, too. Broken Yoke Cafe also serves lunch till 2 p.m. From sandwiches, salads, and yes, of course, the all-American cheeseburgers. You can order online at Broken Yoke Cafe El Centro or call 760-352-9655. That's 352-9655. For the Tigers, offensively, and coming up with the victory tonight, Jaden Ayala 
would complete and he's got these up real fast. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of twenty one for hundred and forty three yards passing. And uh, amongst that, Joe Robles, like I was saying we've missed him not being out there. Four catches, fifty eight yards for Gio, and then uh, three catches for thirty yards for Mario Gexiola. Jared Nixon, two catches for twenty three yards. J.J. Menace, one catch for 11 yards, and then one catch for 7 yards for uh, Alfredo Dorme. And I think that gets everybody on that. And then there was, of course, the one-for-one for, one for Gio Robles on an option pass, 52 yards to Jaden Wilson. And that was Jaden's only catch tonight, and it goes 52 yards and a score. Uh, touchdown. Yeah, so <laughs> making the most of it. Huh? <laughs> three, three single catches for ten TDs. Leading ball rusher for the Tigers was uh, Castro, who had come up with uh, 44 yards on 15 carries, so good outing for Andres. And then uh, J.J. Menes, 14 carries, 42 yards, so 86 yards there for the Tigers. Added to the 143, 229 yards unofficially for the Tigers offensively. And uh, we'll take a look at Valley Center in just a moment. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has supported all sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way keeping our kids busy with school activities. Members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please call Betty or Larry Zinn at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Did you know that a... Hey, Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial is serving the best Japanese cuisine in the Imperial Valley. K-Sushi offers you 50 different sushi rolls, plus beer, wine, and sake. And they also have teriyaki chicken or beef, rice and noodles. K-Sushi Bar and Grill in Imperial. They're open daily from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. K-Sushi also caters and welcomes big groups anytime. Call 760-355-4440. That's 355-4444. Your takeout. For Valley Center, Braylon Mitchell would complete 8 of 23 passes, 140 yards, and two touchdowns. And the touchdowns were, as I mentioned, a couple of players that hadn't had touchdown receptions all year. And one of those is Lincoln Zetmeyer. He had a 14-yard catch, his lone catch of the night. And then late in the game with seconds to go, Ely Contreras caught a 15-yarder for a touchdown. Uh, outside of that, there was Kevin Garcia. He would have three catches for 47 yards. Jesse Morales, three catches for 64 yards, and uh, then rushing 75 yards, but 41 of that was on the fake punt to Hotchkiss. And then Kevin Garcia, three carries for 17 yards. Brandon Mitchell, minus seven on his carries, nine yards on four carries for Daniel Staley. And the one that was not a factor was Jet Quintus Staley, who was such a factor in the first game against Imperial. He had just 14 yards on six carries. So 215 was uh, the total that amount is going to go offensively to Valley Center. And you have some updated scores? Yeah, then we just got them. Uh, final is Sweetwater 44, Southwest 8. And in the fourth, we have Vincent over Valhalla 42-7. to seven. And Escondido 34, Calexico 21 in the fourth. Brawley 21, Bishops 20 in the fourth. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's something. I wish that we could tell what, how much time was left there. Yeah, yeah. So I'll get you updated on that. And uh, the Tigers will be in Fallbrook next Friday night. In, uh, I believe it's the quarterfinals that will be yes. the next round on that. Yes. And uh, Fallbrook seated number two. And uh, they've been toward the top and was number one there for a while as well. Um, you know, I want to make a, a note of the seniors because this is their last oh, home game. Call. And we're going to do that as uh, our wrap-up will continue in just a moment. Did you know that about a 1,000 students from around the Imperial Valley are getting a jump on their college careers by attending IVC classes right now on their own high school campus? Ask us about our dual enrollment programs, available to students at most Imperial Valley high schools. Get started now at the number one community college in the nation. Check us out. For information, go to imperial.edu and search dual enrollment. That's imperial.edu. 
Sans Auto Body has been serving customers in the Imperial Valley for many years now. Their mission is to be recognized as a premier provider of auto body repair services. Sands Auto Body also works closely with you and your insurance company on your collision repair. They're committed to delivering superior quality and customer service by exceeding your expectations. Stan's Auto Body thanks you for making them number one with CarWise.com. Give them a call or stop by 1880 West Euclid Avenue in El Centro. This being the last home game for the seniors, we'd like to mention all of them that was on the, the team this year. Jaden Lopez did a great job uh, offensively for the Tigers and also on defense. Uh, another senior, Jaden Wilson, had a big touchdown tonight, uh, 52 yards. And, uh, in fact, on the season now. That's his longest reception of the season. His previous was 44, and that's his third touchdown reception of the year. So Jaden making his last appearance in the red and white here in Imperial. Ethan Reeves, just heartbreaks for him. Oh, gosh. He uh, had a touchdown run last week, a good long run, and broke a lot of tackles. But when he came up, he came up limping, and then we saw him limping off the field last week. I don't know whether he got into the game at night tonight or not. No, no he was in there. He, he was, was in there, okay. yeah. Um, I know the first quarter for yeah. sure, and then but was not able to play from the majority of the game, and you just feel really bad for him, you know, an all Imperial Valley League player, linebacker, and and then his last chance to play in front of the home crowd and be injured, and you just you could see how much it hurt him. Uh, there's Joe Robles, man, can't say enough about that young man. Yeah. Uh, when you look at him as uh, the number one punter in the state, number twelve in the country. And with three field goals tonight, has 11 field goals on the season, one more, and it will tie for the school record for career, and he's doing it in one year. Yeah. So he's done a great job this year as a senior. Alfredo Dorame, man, he really came on and showed some wheels in the last few games. Returning, had that long punt return for the touchdown last week. So he is a senior in his final game. Gavin Robles, you feel sad for him, too, because he's been injured most of the year. Uh, played quarterback some last year, and uh, his just injuries have taken him down. Kate of Walters also did not suit up tonight as a senior, and again, injuries with him. Victor Amarias, uh, Jared Nixon, his last chance yeah. in a Tiger football uniform will see him in basketball, and he's outstanding in that. And uh, But this is his last one there. And for him, uh, his season, four touchdown pass receptions on the season. And again, add some more to it? Yeah, we go ahead. And Chris Castro, running back. He was a great addition this year. We missed him. Transfer first, from Calexico. Yeah, first and, few uh, games. Right, he was injured games. the first few games. Yeah. And then came on and, and did real wow, well. Wow, impressed us. Yeah, he really he did. Impressed us. He ended up uh, with, uh, let's see, four touchdown reset or t- four touchdown rushing and one 100-yard game. Yep. 100-plus yard game. So, yeah, Made he a did a great job. Big difference. And I just seen the, uh, Elijah Guerrero just walk off. Defensive lineman. Cool. Great kid. Yep. Great kid. And I hear nothing but good about him. Steven loves him. Didn't get a lot of play time, but he said he's a great kid. Good. Coachable. So coachable he's in. Yep. Joshua Keys. Right. Joshua Keys. Linebacker. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he was in today. I don't know if I called his name today. No, I didn't. I know he was in on a fumble recovery in Holville, if I remember right. Yeah. Way back when. 12 year Campos. Oh. Um, Again, what can you say? Oh, he's done everything. He's everything. Offensive, defensive. And whatever he's been asked to do, he's done. Gives up his body. Yep. He gives up his body on it whenever he has to. He's just a yep. tremendous player. And took a trip Took a trip. Um, he sure did. Adam Colorado. Yeah, Adam he State. He may end up getting a scholarship. I sure him. hope so. I would love to see that'd him again. Boy, there. to be able to see four of our kids there, that'd be great. Yeah, well, I'll take Ethan, too. <laughs> yeah, well, and if Ethan, too, five, yeah. Oh, you bet, you bet. Frankie Martinez, offensive lineman, mm-hmm. big boy. Yeah. Jose Apodaca, center. Another one. Been a captain. From last year and this year, he's just a team leader. Yeah. And he gets so excited. I'd love to watch him play. Yeah. Ethan Aguirre Pierro, also offensive, defensive lineman, 6'2", mm-hmm. 295, will be missed. Ruben Rivera, offensive line. And the last one, Jeremy Vera. Right. Those are the names we've been saying throughout the season and, and for some throughout the last few seasons. Yes. But uh, the Tigers will come up with the win tonight, 16-14, to 14, to go on to the next round against Fallbrook, up in Fallbrook. Yes. They're a pretty city. We've been up there, Pig and I have been up there a couple of times. And uh, 
one one for a funeral, so that wasn't so, so happy. But the second time we went, there was a car show, and I really liked that. Okay. So, <laughs> but it's a very pretty city up there in Fallbrook, and that's where the Tigers will be at next Friday night. And uh, so we hope that you can, if you're up in the San Diego area, make sure to go by there. Final Tri-City Christian, 35, Calipatria, 6. So, okay. Uh, great for Calipatria, Tony yeah. Leon in his first year as head coach. Picked up a few wins this year, which they I don't think they had a single win last year. Nope, and then there were some other games that they were close in, too. So you're seeing that program getting turned yeah, around. I'm glad I'm to see it with them. Happy for Tony. Yeah. So happy for him. Yeah. So that's about it from here. Uh, final score again, Imperial 16, Valley Center 14. And the Tigers pick up their second win this season against the Jaguars. You know, that's always hard to do. You get that first one, but then now... The first one doesn't matter if you don't win this one. Yeah. This was a do or die. And the Tigers coming up with three field goals by Joel Robles and then a long bomb from uh, uh, Giovanni Robles. Robles. I should say it was to, to, um, to Joel Robles. But the pass, pass went 52 yards to Jaden Wilson. Wilson. That was the lone touchdown the Tigers had tonight. But uh, what a beauty it was. Yes. It was fun to Great. see. So. Great win for the Tigers. Now they move on. And they move on against Fallbrook, the number two seed. We want to thank all of our sponsors, too, oh, gosh. for being yeah. with us. Without them, we're not able to bring these to El Zarape Restaurant. I, I feel bad for Rick Sharp because I'm trying to think of some way to teleport him. Uh, carne asada quesadilla, <laughs> but I can't do it. So, Rick, I'm going to be mean and say I'm going to go have one for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roto-Rooter, we want to thank them for the Brick House Deli. Jerry Tucker down there, former Tiger. I told him one time, I said, you know, they're probably going to, to – uh, Retire your jersey number sometime here at Imperial. He said, why? I said, well, Royce was 21, too. <laughs> and Jerry was 21. So I said, you'll have your jersey retired. So go ahead. You got another score? Uh, one second left. Central over East Lake, 14-13. With one second With one left. Second wow, left. what a close game that is over yeah. at Kyle Jones Field. Wow. That is a close one. We also want to thank the Imperial Tiger Football Association for Johnny's Burritos, staple here in Imperial for many years, Southwest Security, uh, Broken Yoke. I'm just trying to talk big mm-hmm. into it. Going down there tomorrow morning, see Trevor Cox. He usually works on Saturday morning, Gary's yeah. son. And uh, we want to thank the Imperial Quarterback Club with Betty and Larry Sin uh, spearheading it. The IBC, uh, award-winning IBC, I should say, is uh, they're already picking. They got a, awarded uh, number one junior college in the country. And Case Sushi, we want to thank them and also Stan's Auto Body for being with us here yes. in this 2023 season. It's been great. One. Everybody who's listened in. Yep, and everybody oh, listening in and Gabe yeah. pressing the buttons back in the studio. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. We, we couldn't we do, it do it without, without We can't do it without all that extra help. So, Kurt and Gabe. So, yeah, and Kurt with all the scores that we get and yeah. Carol and Gene. I got to talk to Gene yesterday. Or, well, both of them actually yesterday went down to the studio and talked with both of them. We just uh, appreciate them letting us come and do this on Friday yes. night. And you Enjoy. for allowing me to do that. Yeah, well, I appreciate I get to you watch coming you. with me. I get to watch you. <laughs> Do what you do, yeah. and I, I, it's just unbelievable what you do. I appreciate that. And I Thank get you. to see it. It's first fun. So the final score again is we'll sign off. Imperial 16, Valley Center 14. Tigers will be in Valley Center or in uh, Fallbrook next Friday night to take on the Warriors up there in the quarterfinals of Division Three CIF football. So signing off for George. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah. Good night. Good night, all.